Right, let's start this exciting stuff with the uh, giveaway tonight. So, right, let's see what we've got here first of all. We've got Mr. G, Foray, Andy, Amok, uh, Steps, Sendarik, uh, Spec Homster, Colt 45, Dr. Miz, DMX. 87, Bag of Potatoes, Pro 7, Eldritch. Hey, guys. So, yep, yeah, tonight you can win the C64 sitting there at the bottom. The uh, Competition Pro joystick that we did build two weeks ago on stream. Um, the tickets are now open. Remember, you can only buy three tickets. Um, so, any more than that and you, your points will be taken, but you won't, you won't win any... Um, extra extra raffle tickets for that so uh should be open hopefully uh let me just double check yep it is open cool uh channel points so if you just uh look in the channel point list uh, there is a entry for 2500 points um so it's Changed a little bit from the build. Uh, the internals are the same, but it's now running BMC64, um, which is much, much quicker to update. Um, uh, much, much quicker to boot, that is. So, um, I've got a list of all the tickets that get bought here as just as a backup, just in case uh, the system breaks. Because uh, I have poured it over to the new overlay today, so hopefully it's hopefully it still works properly. Um, uh, and the tickets are coming in quick already, so hopefully we should see an updated count in the in the top. Uh, uh, tonight, we're drinking uh, some more red, some Rioja again uh, from Morrison's this time. Damn, that's hard to see. It's really bright. The exposure is really high on that camera. Um, yeah, you can only buy, th well, you can buy as many as you want, but only three will count towards the draw. So, um, so just be careful how many you, uh, you buy, you're not going to get extra entries for, for buying more than three. Um, okay, cool. Right. So girlfriend's had a bit of this wine already. That's why it's open. That's fine. Just means the bottles have time to breathe. I've also got two bottles this time, just because one wasn't quite enough last time. Hey, Grey Defender. Let's see if the count is working. Yeah, the count is working all right. Cool, that's good. Um, I've got 22 requests, but only 21 tickets, unless somebody just bought one. Oh, yeah, somebody did just buy one. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so before we start, I thought I'd uh, quickly uh, show you where I got to with the particles. Some of you might have seen this already on the Discord, but it's uh, looking pretty neat now, actually. Um, it's probably hard to see, actually, on that, uh, on that screen. Uh, but essentially, I've now got particles that work with physics and bounce off the scenery as well. So this is, this is pretty good. That code is um, is shared in the GitHub, uh, and as you may have realised now that this is the um, uh, this is the the basis for the particle system in second check seconoid checkanoid, not sure how to pronounce it actually, um, which I'll be starting coding um, next week. Ticket does nothing. Use the redeem points. Yeah, ticket ticket does nothing. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. You have to use the uh, the channel point button just uh, wherever that might be down there somewhere. It's trolling the ticket, yeah. Uh, cool. Right. So let me let me load up the game. So tonight we're gonna. 
we're just going to kind of try and um, uh, one, uh, try and polish the game a little bit around the uh, behaviors and uh, stuff. Nothing, nothing too complex tonight. Connect to three bits as well. Should be completed. Oh yeah, start the races as well. Thanks, Steps. <coughs> no tickets run out. No, no. Check an eye. Yeah, I think that's how to call it. I think. Uh, thank you for the sub, um, Amok. It's a gift sub, uh, and welcome to the subs, Crazy UK. Uh, just trying to work out if tickets have run out. They shouldn't have run out. They should be unlimited. Yeah, they're unlimited, so he should be able to keep buying them. Uh, so you said I can only redeem one. Really? Um, you should be able to redeem multiple. Uh, let's see, you've got one redemption there. Maybe, yeah, maybe the points, your points are a bit low or something. Um, I'd be surprised if they were, though. Um, yeah, maybe just check the points, make sure it's in the list. You should be able to redeem multiple times, as I've got nothing limiting uh, the amount of times you can redeem. Um, so you should be okay for that. Um, oh, my stomach feels a bit weird tonight, but um, so it's already redeemed. Uh, oh yeah, let me add points to what to everybody yeah try giving your browser a refresh maybe it's maybe it's that there's there's there shouldn't be anything stopping you um redeeming points um at all so get okay, give it a refresh maybe maybe that will work okay let's have a quick look where we are with the game then this wine's pretty nice actually i'm quite pleased with that choice Bit of a Nola gay. So. Borders back to normal. Normal, there we go. Yeah, so tonight I just want to kind of take a look at a few things, just try and anything basically around um the enemies absorbing the enemies killing the enemies that sort of thing I just want to make sure that this is all working uh like the little messages that come off um it's making it see like that one there just sent them and didn't go up i want to know why that's happening so ah cool okay it's worked now awesome so i mean it's Already we've had 14 people enter and 38 tickets. That's pretty good, so. So for anybody who is short on points, if you keep an eye on the little channel button down there, every now and again you'll get a little, I think it's every 15 minutes you get, um, uh, you'll get a little kind of, uh, icon that pops up and you can claim some extra points plus every 10 minutes or so that you're in the stream you'll get a few extra points so 
Um, you have until midnight tonight um, to to build enough points. Um, uh, and then you should be, you should be able to um, you should be able to afford one. I think anybody who's been to at least one or two streams before should be able to gain enough points by uh, by midnight. Um, how did Darth Vader knew, know what Luke was going to do? And he felt his presence. Terrible. Uh, thanks for the uh, host, Andy. Appreciate it, dude. Um, okay, cool. So let's, uh, as Step said, let's make this a little bit bigger. It's more about vertical, isn't there? There we go. So yeah, what we're what we're looking for is is problems to, to kind of fix tonight. So the first one was that sometimes the message doesn't move upwards; it just kind of stays where it is. Um, and the other one is probably going to be related to the these behaviors, like that one there. I don't know if you saw that with the um, with the gumball guy when he spawns, he kind of does a strange uh, strange movement. Which I'm not entirely sure what. What's going on there? Uh, let's see if we can get some points over this side. So it doesn't happen very often, but it does does happen. <laughs> Masters of the universe. So yeah, I'm re I'm really looking forward to um to starting the I'm gonna call it checkenoid until somebody corrects me otherwise. Um uh, uh, swung from men oh <laughs> I thought that was I actually thought that was a bot joke then for a for a moment. Uh I'll let you when he eats nice touch. Yeah, it's I think it was I just it was something I had an idea for last week and I just decided that needed to go in, so I don't know. Uh just so you know as well, if you both try and queue Airwolf, um it's only gonna accept one. No tune can be played more than once every thirty minutes, so Um, okay, so the first problem is this uh, this message getting stuck instead of rising up. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to Technoid. So, there's going to be some uh, complex things in it. Um, and some, we're going to have to make some uh, compromises uh, compared to the original. Uh, for a start, the original is 24 tiles by 14 tiles, uh, two by two, um, which means that the screens are going to have to be reduced in size slightly, um, which I don't think is a, a huge deal. Um, but it is, we're going to have to think very carefully about how we, how we lay these out. So um, Andy from Thalamus is going to be doing um, all the kind of level layouts. Um, so that's what he's working on at the moment. He's been doing a, a few of the graphic grips and stuff for it, uh, which he's given me, which is good. It gives me something to kind of start with. Um, and then on Thursday, I'm going to actually start building the, the, the structure for the game. Uh, so it's going to be a Gmod game. So I'm going to use, uh, see, everything looks to be fine. It's, I don't know what causes the randomness. Um, That was good. That was correct. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start by building the, the cart loading system, which is going to make uh, loading stuff in nice and easy. Um, and then I'm going to look at the multiplexer because I want quite a, a powerful multiplexer. Because uh, any, if you've had a look at the, um, um, if you've had a look at the game on YouTube, you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. Uh, this is why I did the uh, the particles system on Thursday, 
Um, it was it was designed to kind of be used in Technoid. It's not going to be anywhere near the number of particles that the, the original game has, but I'm hoping that um, it should be enough that we can kind of create similar effects. We're just not in the kind of levels that we were before, so. Um, uh, it's really hard to keep up with chat with the race going on, so. Uh, uh, hey, Retro Steve, welcome to the stream, dude. What's the agenda for tonight after the giveaway? So, yeah, going to work on the, the behaviors in here a little bit. So um, my last week of work is, my last full week of work is this week. Um, so that means I've got this Saturday and next Saturday um on the game before i'm off for four weeks and i want to use the time when i'm off to create a level editor for the game so i want to spend this this stream and the next stream getting things in place so we can do the level editor so one of these may be um uh one of these may be um doing some i might even do some graphics tonight it depends so I want to create some alternative um, tile sets as well, so we can we can really kind of uh, kind of vary the levels a little bit as well. Uh, but same about both of dark here. Yeah. Yes, and I do have to work on refreshing my Python memory, which I'm not massively looking forward to. But thankfully, I don't need to have like super python skills i just need to be able to do um basically system call stuff is mainly with stuff so being able to write files and read files and stuff i just need to refresh on that oh i noticed a bug there oh interesting so i don't know if you can see that there's a it's an interesting piece of oh okay not sure why that's not clearing. Might have to look into that. Oh. Well, this is completely new. I've not seen this before. But it seems like sometimes these get stuck. Now, this could be because of the position that it's happening on the screen um that it's not clearing properly so if you remember we did make some changes to the clearing code so i think it's time to make some notes of these so no this is um this is almost oh god what if i just screwed up I just screwed up a note without actually checking what it was but that's fine don't need that Uh, I think this is because one of the things I did was um, make sure on the last stream that, that no crash happens when um, when it's trying to clear a particle. So sometimes it doesn't clear it. Um, we may have to have an additional check in here. It's probably because of where it's happening. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's to do with the position you are on the screen when it goes to clear, like it's. It's not been drawn yet or something. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Hmm. Good if I can replicate it every time, but This is um uh four non blondes, isn't it? Can one buy channel points for shillings? No, unfortunately not. Random issue the most difficult to fix, yeah, indeed. Um I think what's happening here is just because of where um the code for drawing and clearing is actually occurring on the screen. Um and I think because I tried to be clever and 
Right, let, let's see if we can replicate and then let's see if we can... I think this is probably the most important bug to fix tonight. So let's give it a try. How are we looking for entries? So remember, you have until midnight to, to enter. Um, we've got 15 entries, 41 tickets. That's, uh, most people getting three tickets then, I think, there. Um, let's try and... So yeah, see, annoyingly, it's not happening all the time, which is incredibly frustrating to try and duplicate. Um, it could be only when the um, only when the platform is pulsing. Uh, so let's try that out. Let's try and clear the level. Oh shit, bad. Let's, let's get this guy when he jumps down. Yeah, you see that gumball when they so one of the things that's happening is when they jump when they drop out of the pipe, um, they're still doing their movement code. So really they should um some enemies should just drop straight out of the pipe and not try and do their movement code. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. So it it seems to have started occurring when Switch is flashing, which is interesting. I haven't got it to replicate on that side again, but I have got it there. Okay, let's try again. I want to see if I can get it to replicate without killing everything. So, Only when he's fat. Yeah, maybe it's only when he's fat. Let's let's try some stuff out. So let's see if we can get oh no, there we go. So it can occur at any time. It seems to be just on this level as well. It doesn't seem to be happening further down the screen. Which is what leads me to think maybe it's to do with the, the raster timings. Um God he's fast. So certain um, certain routines as uh, uh, leak into the top of the screen here, and I believe that the uh, the the projectiles is one of the, such routines. Um, so it could just be that it's being drawn later than it's being cleared or something. Um, we'll have to have a look and, and see. Hey, Gildan, oh, long time no see. I haven't seen you for a while. I don't think. How do you get a ticket? Um, <coughs> there is. Uh, uh, hang on, just. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So at the bottom of the bottom of the uh, screen, there's a there's a uh, channel points um, thing where you can redeem for uh, Sid tunes and stuff. In there, there is a there is a ticket purchase. It's two thousand five hundred channel points. So you need to have been watching a couple of streams uh, in order to have the points for it. Um, I've been looking for a while, no idea what you're up to though. <laughs> uh, and you will earn points as the stream goes on. Um, and you can earn more points by being active in the stream and clicking on the little present packet that appears every now and again. Um, you can also get points for subbing, following, uh, things like that. I, I, I think I think Twitch has a list of what you get awarded the points for. So, if in doubt, refer to that. Mm, okay, so I am not entirely sure why that might be happening and why we're only just seeing it. Um, I don't know if it's just sheer luck um, that. We haven't seen it before, but I kind of doubt it. I kind of feel like we would have spotted this before. Oh, it does. It happened there as well. So it, it seems to be happening anywhere in the top half of the screen. Oh, 
Oh shit. Yeah, no way. We also need to sort the frown position out, but that's not important. That can be done later. It's not going to affect the, the way the levels work. This is not that easy to reproduce. There we go. So then I'll just throw one, maybe. Two. Position. I'd like to get somewhere where I can replicate it almost every time. That would be that would be really handy. And the only positive from this is that the um, oh no, it happens down there as well. Wow. Um, the only positive from this is that it, it isn't going to affect um, the splits don't like sprites. No, they don't. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the only positive from this is that even if the thing gets stuck, it's not actually going to affect uh, the game, other than it's going to have a obviously a, an annoying um, thing on screen. Although it does disappear after a while, that's kind of weird. I want to get it in a place, get it stuck, and then I want to see if it remains there. Right, so there's one there. So every time I shoot, it's updated, and that's because it's it's copying that character into this position. Why is it just one? Why is it not showing the whole thing? It literally just seems to be showing the, the top left here. So let's go and have a look at the clear routine, see where that's happening. Um, and I'm going to put some, put some border checks around it just so we can see where it's happening. Uh, Saw my layout. Uh, 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 fire up player two and try it. Yeah, that's an idea. Now we're looking for it. Wow, you guys are really on a mission. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's try two players. So. See if player two has the same thing. Yeah, it does as well. I'm fairly certain this has only just started happening. Oh, okay, like I'm pretty sure in the previous versions it wasn't doing this. So now follow. So it's not limited to just player one. Player two is also player two flickered off then. Oh, there's there's definitely some rastery stuff going on here because I kind of flickered on and off there. Hmm, okay. Okay, let's let's investigate a little bit. So I want to look at the clear sprite routine. I think that's where to begin. Uh, so these are our software sprites. These are the updates. Actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at where stuff is happening. So, uh, game loop. Okay, so here's our normal loop. 
projectiles, update projectiles. So it could be this routine here. Because looking at this, there's an awful lot of stuff going on in this loop. The soft sprites are actually updated at the top, but the projectiles are updated here. So first of all, I'm going to see just kind of how much border time we're using for the entire thing so far, because um, this is quite a lot of stuff going on now. So it'd be good to see just how much we're using. OK, so we're. We're not using that much, although once the enemies start coming out, it does start piling up. And look at that, we are getting really close to using all the rest of the time. So depending on the type of enemies that come out, so I'm guessing if I grab these and let some more kind of complicated enemies come out. Hmm, okay. So maybe we have to optimize some of this a little bit. Because we are very close to the kind of limits here. And I do note that if I am above the white bar, that's when the problems seem to start, so. And there. It's almost like it's, because it only seems to be failing to clear one spot. So it is clearing, some of it, just not all of it, which makes me think maybe there's a, a carry error somewhere. Um, let's get rid of the border thing again. Let's go and have a look. It's just weird how it's only just started happening. So this was the check that we did here. Um, we basically all the, the, the clear locations together um so that that was one change we did this was the original um change that was done uh to try and prevent the crash and then i added an extra uh thing in where the sprite was spawned I can't remember where that was add sprite here so this was the little piece of code i did last time so i'm just gonna get rid of that for a second see if that gets rid of our problem Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I think the problem is, is that I might be doing, um, I, I might be trying to work around some of the fixes, some of the uh, crashes and accidentally creating a state where it doesn't get clear properly because actually that does seem to have fixed it. Okay, that's that's fine, but we, we might get a weird CPU jump at some point there. Just keep my eye on it. Okay, so what I think is what I think is happening is that this add sprite can be called somewhere outside the interrupt, right? So technically you can call this um anywhere in this this normal loop. Uh, actually none of this is in the interrupt. This is all sequential, so this should be software sprite update sprites, update projectile. Dot cosmos win. Anybody bet big on dot cosmos? No, not really. Grey defender with a thousand on it. Richmond Mike did, did he? No, I'm not except the Doc here. Doc has a, a quite an advantage with his freeze thing, so. Ah, oh, annoyingly that looks like it's solved the problem. So yeah, what I, what I think was happening, it was um, when a new sprite was being added, it was, it was clearing the um, the clear location for the previous sprite before it had actually been cleared. So I think the proper fix for this, I'm just going to make sure that this has worked. And if it has, I'm going to update the, the fix a little bit, um, which is to make sure that the sprites have been cleared um, before you can throw again. At the moment, it's just 
that's just counting, uh, but not necessarily that they've been cleared. Uh, whereas it looks like this has actually solved the problem. Seems to be exacerbated by grabbing all the power ups and just having enemies on screen. But yeah, this looks like it's fixed. I, I'm going to verify that by just putting the code back in again. <laughs> Steps is trying to. <laughs> trying to sneak up the ranks a bit there. Ah, uh, there you go. See it, it happened. Yeah, it is that. Okay. Okay, cool. So this is probably the wrong place to do it. Then I think the proper way to do this. Hang on. So it's in the moment. It's in clear MSB, clear LSB. I think we can probably get away with doing this. So the reason this was in there is because it was possible to, to fire a sprite um, and actually not have um, not have it appear that you've immediately hit something. Um, and so by putting these values in, it made sure that when it came to clear, um, that it wasn't clear in some random place in memory. Um, this is just making sure that when the sprites are reset, that they're re all reset to zero, so that these values, uh, where is it? Um, the clear is these values here, even though they start with zero. Although, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. I guess we're gonna, just going to have to see what happens. Um, and and uh and see if we get CPU jam again. So um when is the raffle end of stream? No, the raffle is at uh tw it's midnight, so it's uh an hour and forty five minutes from now. I've noticed C sixty four freaks have too many lying around, yes. Yeah, some people do have way too much. I used to have a lot, and um, I realized I wasn't using them all, so I, I sold most of them on eBay. Um, yeah, it isn't an original C64. This is this is a little bit unique in that it's a, it's a custom Raspberry Pi one. Um, but it's, a, it's as close as I think you can get the Raspberry Pi to the C64. Um, the only thing you can't do is plug a disk drive into it or a tape recorder or a you know, cartridge. Um, but you do have two USBs on the back, so you can use a USB storage to load things from. So um, the going price for a C64 motherboard with a SID in. The boards go for about 25 to £30 pounds alone, and then the, the SID is probably about £30 pounds on top. Um, honestly, um, the most... The easiest way to do it is just take the risk on a on a full system. Um, prices are kind of quite heavily marked up when they're separate. Like that. Stop talking. You need to finish this and finish C three. <laughs> Don't you start, Kill Dan? You telling everybody I'm doing Creatures three? I'm not. Okay, I think. I think we can safely say that bug is kind of squashed for now, but it's probably going to reintroduce a CPU jam in some rare cases. Um, I I don't know how to replicate the CPU jam, unfortunately. Okay, this is kind of working okay now. 
Okay, so I'd, I'd maybe like to address this guy next. So I don't know if you saw that. When he falls out of the pipe, he kind of moves around the screen quite quickly. So let's have a look at him. So I'm going to go into, uh, I need two files here. So I need the uh, Mac data so we can actually just set the level up to just be all the same enemy. Uh, and then I need the behaviors. So the behaviors. Uh, so Gumball, it says Gumball 7 and 8, but I'm pretty sure 8 was something different. Uh, gummy bear, that's why. So 7, we need enemy 7. Okay, so in our list of data for the level, uh, we're just going to put, fill it all with 7s in here, and then we just see the Gumball. So we're going to try and tweak this behavior a little bit and see see what we can do with it. The Shalom Kans. Breacher 3 never started. God damn you. No, the Checkanoids come about because um, I spoke with Andy quite a lot um, about doing stuff for Palamus. Um, and I've kind of not been doing very much off stream recently. So. Um, this is a way for me to kind of get something done for Thalamus. Uh, and by doing it on stream, it kind of gives me the motivation to get those things done as well. Uh, thank you for the follow. Uh, that guy, Tim. That guy, TM. That guy, Tim. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is an opportunity for me to do something on stream, um, which will help me with the motivation. Uh, I, I really haven't done very much off stream at all in about six months now. So, um, I've done little bits here and there, but not, not too much. <laughs> oh my God. I just can't get away from it. Kind of, uh, thanks for the sub guild and welcome to the subs, dude. Uh, right, okay, so this should spawn a load of the gumball guys now, um, and you'll see what I mean about the be the behavior when they fall out the pipes. I think it's an easy thing to fix because we can just make them fall straight down out of the pipes, but um, you'll see what I mean. So, probably this one up here. You know, when, they f when they come out of the pipes, they come out um, falling at an angle. They don't fall straight down. So watch this guy. You see how he, he went down like that? Um, ooh. Well, you should get bonuses for getting four at a time. But this one up here has a problem when he comes out because of that. See how he felt? I mean, it's it's not a huge problem, but it just looks kind of broken. So I'm going to change his behavior so that instead of falling at an angle, when they first spawn, they're only going to fall straight down. They're not going to move left or right. So it should be a fairly easy thing to do. You like the new Doc? Right, what did Doc do? I missed that. Um. Oh, one again by far, yeah. <laughs> Doc won, that's what Doc did, yeah. And not bad odds on Doc as well, but now you've said that, everyone will bet on him and he'll lose. So, Although DMX got 50,000 then, uh, Mr. G, Mad Beagle both got 25,000. It's pretty good. Um, productivity has been slow the last few months, but I'm back on track now. My lockdown is over. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the lockdown is kind of over here. I mean, I've been going out for walks every now and again, uh, every other day or so. Not not long, half an hour, just to, to get some fresh air and do, do something a bit different. Um, but I'm still not stupidly confident, and it, my sleep patterns are still screwed up. So um, that's the main thing is the sleep. Once I get over the sleep um, thing, then I'll be back to normal. Uh, okay, right, so let's have a look at the behavior for the gumball guy. 
the heat hasn't helped either. The, the, the ridiculous heat that it's been at night. I mean, you know, we we look forward to getting thirty degrees of heat um, during the day, but we've been getting thirty degrees of heat at night um, in in some cases. So that's that's kind of insane for us. I mean, all right, it's not been that outside, but indoors, it's definitely been thirty degrees at night. So. Too much of a passion project i'm glad to hear it as well i'm really looking forward to seeing that uh completed just uh take your time with it don't rush it people will try and rush you just it's ready when it's ready right okay so on spawn so i think what we need to do is we need to set um uh, or falling spawn flag. Um, and basically, all we're going to do uh, set static memory as soon as we spawn, we're going to set it to zero one. Um, which is going to be here, check below enemy. Oh, wait, this shouldn't be moved from left to right anyway. Uh, okay. I can't remember if the carry is cleared or set when it's fallen. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's cleared when you're falling. So it would jump to here. Ah, uh, but there is uh there is this walk left, walk right thing. So uh what we need to do uh here oh. oh yeah, we just need to check here. Okay, so if we do uh get static memory, we'll grab falling falling spawn. Uh, if it's equal to zero, then we jump to here. Otherwise, uh, here, we do need to set that to zero to make sure that it's reset. Uh, and then here, we're just going to jump to... Hang on, this is saying that we're in... I might be getting this the wrong way around. Let me check the default between yeah, enemy macros default. So the carry is clear if we're not falling. Okay, so we're not falling. So here, actually, we need to set that. So. So if we are doing our full spawn, then we just have to basically skip over all of this. So well, we're just going to jump to jump to Don, I guess is the place to jump to. Yeah. So that should prevent those enemies from from moving side to side when they fall out of the pipes. It should only happen um, when they first come out of the pipe. The rest of the time, they should be able to move in midair, which is correct. Uh, it's just that initial fall, so we just need to keep an eye on them there. Also, I notice they always move to the left when they come out of the pipe. They never go right, so um, I think we might need to randomize it. That's better, because that one came out and worked. Yeah, okay, cool. That's, that's pretty much fixed. Um, So I guess the other thing is when they come out of the pipe, should they face different directions? And I think they should as well. Uh, 
didn't actually see which way they came out of the pipes and I was distracted by chat. So I think they're always going to be walking left when they first come out of the pipe. So left, left, left. Okay, right, so we're going to change that so they face in a random direction. So I think we've already done this with like polar bottle or something like that. So um Oh no, maybe Polar Bottle didn't. Maybe Polar Bottle is sort of a common thing. Ah, there you go. So we've got some face left, face right thing here. So I'm just gonna copy that from the can from the candy cane guy. Uh let's have a look. So this is our spawn here. Uh, let's have a look at the random. So this is the random thing from uh, the candy cane. Let's have a look what it's actually doing. So, uh, so it sets a frame, sets an enemy color. So we can do that the same here because we've already got that here, which is this. Uh, this sets the state based on whether we're facing left or right. is correct. I just want to check candy cane at the end. What does it do? Set enemy frame zero and face done. Okay. Oops, wrong one. This one. Yeah, so this is this is basically the same same piece of code. Uh, we do set a walk frame here, uh, which we set to zero, so that's fine. Jump index FF. Okay, so I think that should be enough to randomize it. Let's have a look. So now they shouldn't all come out uh, facing left or right. They should uh, come out both ways. Uh, okay, jump left and jump right. I don't have. Okay, jump left, jump right. Okay, so that needs to be walk left and walk right. Okay. Okay, should be good. I'll right, go for a quick break after this. Fifteen people have entered, forty-one tickets. It's uh, pretty impressive. Okay, that came. I saw one come out to the right. I just want to make sure it comes out to the left as well. Okay, that one came out facing left. That one came out facing left. That one came out facing right. Cool. So that's this this enemy's tweaked a little bit, which is pretty good. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what am I drinking tonight? Yeah, um, uh, exactly that. Uh, Los Rios, Marcos Los Rios, Rioja, 2017. It's very nice. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. I shall leave the... Um, I shall leave the races on. Uh, we've got about an hour and a half to go before the um, before the giveaway draw takes place. Um, I shall be back shortly. Be right back. Uh, I'm back. Someone just won big. Who won big? Hundred thousand DMX. Oh, you <laughs> you bet quite a lot on. They're playing politics. <laughs> oh dear. He is playing politics as well, isn't he? He's not really a. Uh, he's not very good at it either. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with how that's working now. Pointers. So let's have another play, see if anything, actually, let's put some more of the other enemies back in. Let's 
Set my dates up. My last sub is not working because Gildan sub last, and it's not showing Gildan as the uh, as the last sub guy. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Do I need to open that? Maybe what's that thing? No, it's not that. You might have to fix that at some point. I'm not sure why that's that's so wrong. So. <laughs> Okay, there we go, we've got every enemy in place again now. What are the odds on Gamble? I would say 50-50, I think. Same with Roulette as well. Do I know of a great JS Sid player? Um, I'm just using the one that's built into uh, Deep Sid. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but you can download it separately, I just... I had a lot of problems setting it up, so, um, and I was in a rush, so. Okay, I think what I want to take a look at next is the messages. Some of the messages don't uh, move up the screen straight away, uh, or at all, in fact. And I don't know why. Unfortunately, getting that to replicate is going to be difficult. Oh, shit. Damn it, those things are difficult. See, those messages are going on fine. It just seemed to be the mm message, and that was the only one that I've seen do it have the problem. I've also got this little glitch at the bottom of the screen, these uh, these kind of number twos that appear. Um, still not figured out why that happens. It'd be good to kind of fix that as well. Hey, Cosmin. Oh, yeah, let's do, let's get a, a raffle going. I always do a raffle after I've been for a break. So 10,000 points up for grabs. Uh, checking the entries yep okay wow entries entries have come in quite quickly now it's pretty good <coughs> so these these raffles are just for uh shibby shillings they're nothing to do with the giveaway uh just in case everyone thinks that's what's going on Um, although I may use that system for doing um, smaller raffles for smaller smaller value items, because um, I I do have a few little things here and there. Like I I don't know where I've got this from, but somehow I've I've earned some kind of a Commodore patch of some kind. Oh, raid. Gabriel Domino, thank you for the raid. Um, welcome everyone that's come along with Gabriel. Um, or Gabriel. Um, defend on the 10,000, yeah. Welcome, guys. So, um, yeah, thank you for the raid. Um, I'm Sharon 50 k I'm doing uh, Commodore 64 dev. Um, most, most of my streams are Commodore 64 dev. There is a Tuesday stream, which is currently... Um, uh, Game Boy Color development, uh, and tonight we're working on uh, the game we've been working on for over a year now, actually. Um, Amok with another gift sub. Thank you very much, Amok, and welcome to the subs, uh, Christich. Uh, appreciated, Amok. Far too generous. Um... 
<laughs> Cosmin trying to work out how to buy the ticket. So do you, do you have enough for it? So we're doing a, a, a Raspberry Pi Commodore 64 giveaway tonight. Um, it's going to be about an hour and 17 minutes from now. Um, you do need to uh, use channel points to buy the, purchase a ticket. So you do have to have been on the channel um, for a couple of streams, uh, really, to, to have enough points to to buy a ticket um but i do these i'm going to be doing these giveaways once a month basically with um with purchases from um from the money i make from patreon and, and twitch and stuff so um um if you can't afford a ticket this time uh just keep visiting the stream and you will be able eligible for uh, for one in the uh, in the near future, I'm not sure what the next one's going to be. I think I'm probably going to do a book giveaway on the next one. Um, I'm not sure which books, but we'll we'll sort something. But tonight it's the Raspberry Pi C64, which is this thing over in the corner here on the bottom shelf there. So it's a C64 C case and keyboard uh, with a Raspberry Pi and the key RAR in it, so you can use. Uh, original joysticks uh you use the original keyboard as well um it boots straight into the commodore 64 um emulator basically uh and is boots in about four seconds i think or something like that um so you you have almost the same experience as a real c64 except you can't use some of the peripherals so you can use um can use joysticks. I don't think mice work on it because I think it needs an analog um, thing for the mouse. So I don't think a mouse or a light pen would work as such. Um, but you can um, you can use Atari joysticks. In fact, I'm including the uh, Competition Pro joystick with it. So I've got the Leaf Switch version. So it's not the clicky one, but it's still a very good joystick. Um, so that will be included with it, along with a SD card with a couple of hundred games on it. Um, you can use a USB to load anything you want into the back as well. So um, it will come with instructions on how to use it as well. I'm basically just going to print off the uh, BMC, um, BMC uh, uh, read me basically. There should be enough there. And of course, if anybody has any problems using it, you can contact me on on Discord or Twitter through private messages, and I'll be able to. Uh, be able to help you with that. Yes, there is a lack of fear that the SID is broken. So because it's emulated, there's no SID to break in it. Uh, we're up to 21 entrants now. So it's really kind of, it's really building up. It's pretty good. So it's about an hour and 15 minutes to go before we before we do the giveaway. Uh, just to note as well that you do need to be um, you need, do need to be responsive in chat. Um, if your name is announced, you'll have you'll see a little countdown at the top of the screen. You'll have well, it'll be be over there. Um, you'll have about five minutes to uh, just basically make yourself known in chat um, so that you can claim your prize. Uh, unfortunately, if you do not claim within the five minutes, then we will do the draw again and you will lose out. Uh, which unfortunately happened last time um so just be aware you will need to be uh available in about uh, an hour and 15 minutes to claim the prize as well okay um i think we're looking pretty good for thanks for the host prime seven i think we're looking pretty good for the behaviors um i think maybe these these ufo things need to be adjusted somehow um think they're a bit too simple so maybe i'll make them sweep up and down or something um let's have a look let's let's reload it and, and have a look at them just want to get a feel for everything at the moment just get a feel for what's um what feels right and what 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 could do with tweaking uh, i'm also interested in the marshmallow guy because the marshmallow guy seems to move very very fast indeed so um i don't want it to be too difficult so cola bottle guy so i think there isn't really much to do to him there <laughs> thank you reggae pirate 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been some time coming, so I think we also need to work on this, the, the boost speed as well. I think it's too much. In fact, I'm going to do that first because that boost speed is a bit ridiculous. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look at that. So this is the power up here, but I don't think this actually applies the effect. I think the effect is applied in player, I'm imagining when you move, so. That's not player, this is player, here we go. Uh, power up speed, all right, let's see if we can find that somewhere in the code. Okay, so this is this is where it's happening. It's doubling the speed, which I think is too much. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to have a, a value at the top, um, which will be uh, player boost speed, uh, and we'll just add that to the walk speed instead. Um, so we will need to clear the cloud bit there, and we will need to add the second part in here. So the walk speeds, where are the walk speeds? Find the walk speeds and then, okay, these are the walk speeds. So I'm going to just add player boost speed in here. So you can see we want it so that if you are at the fattest, so if you're moving at one zero zero, um, then you can at least keep up with a guy who's on 180. So maybe the boost speed should be uh, just, leave kind of do you want it the same or do you want it to be slightly faster should a fat guy with a boost move faster than a than the thinnest guy without that's the question here um i would say he should move exactly the same speed as as a fat guy as a thin guy uh and no no faster then that way if you are fat you can only at least keep up with somebody i think that's that's probably what's gonna feel right let's uh oops let's put that in right okay we can always come back and I'll take a look at that if it's if it's not right that's why i put it in as a as a value in there so we can actually play around with it and edit it if we need to all right let's get some more wine in there. i do have another bottle of this so if i do run out i do have a, a backup bottle it's just last time I had to make the bottle last an entire stream and it was it was a struggle taking my time with it, so Okay, so that experience was alright. Then the cola bottle. Don't know what yellow does. I think yellow is just the points. Oh no, yellow is on vulnerability. That's a color change. Yeah, I, I think I think we need to do some work on the on the this one here. But I want to also take a look at this guy as he jumps around. So so one thing is is they do tend to get stuck in in these in this location here. Um, the text just went down. Yes, that was deliberate. So if you're stood on the wrong color, you'll see here. Oh, damn it. If you're stood on the wrong color and you try and absorb, you'll get a negative message and it, it will go down. Uh, completely deliberate. Um... I think I'm going to update myself with some wine too. Good. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So, ah, one thing I have noticed is when you shoot flying enemies and stun them, um, they fall to the ground and they probably shouldn't. They should probably freeze in midair because otherwise what you're going to get is you're going to get, um, or maybe, maybe it's a good thing. 
you're going to get um, flying, especially the UFOs, flying enemies that just hover over the floor instead. I think I'm what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try and add a bit of a kind of a wave to the UFO guy. So it is going to move kind of left and right, but it's going to do so in a, in a kind of sine wave up and down motion as well, I think. Um, now, how we do that, I'm not sure. I need to think about this. I think we can probably use the jump and fall tables and just have an index that's constantly going through through them all. Um, so let's have a look. Let's let's put lots of uh, lots of the UFOs in. And see what we can do with them. So the UFO is four. So let's put lots of number fours in here. It'd be good to get the uh, the level editor because we can get rid of all this crap in here. I think I'm going to do uh, after this one. I think I am going to do uh, some new uh, graphics as well. I think we'll we'll take a look at adding some some new kind of level data in. Um, start by um start by just kind of creating a replacement for every character in the current map set um and then using that to build some tiles which duplicate the tiles that already exist but in a different style and then we'll we'll see if we can just make the level look completely different by by doing that um i've got some kind of ideas so um let me just start the level um, so it's very kind of candy based, um, which is kind of hard to get across in, in level design as such. Um, I think this kind of, it, it's more to do with the, the contrast between the colors. It looks kind of bright and kind of heavy contrast. Um, so what I was thinking and actually looking at mayhem for inspiration here as well. Um, so if you look at, uh, is it spotty land? I think it's called in. Oh yeah, look what I found as well. So this is probably going to be the next hardware build. I'll show you this now. So what this lets you do is it lets you connect any matrix style keyboard to the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it shows a Commodore 16 plus four here, but that's not what I'm going to, what, not what I'm going to build. Cause if I, if I did that, I may as well just use a key raw. Um, but it does let you use any of these kind of matrix things and connect them directly to the GPIO on here. Um, so what that will allow me to do is connect um, the Spectrum 48K keyboard up to the Raspberry Pi through the GPIO. Um, and all this is is a script. I think it's a Python script actually. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So it's just a, it's just a Python script which reads these keys. So I will probably be using um, this to do uh, the Spectrum 48K uh, giveaway, which I'm going to do uh, in a couple of months' time. I don't know when it's going to be. I need to get all the things together, and uh, we'll do the build on stream again and, and see how it goes. Uh, it will probably be a Pi Zero because uh, it needs to fit inside the, the Spectrum 48K. And uh, There's not an awful lot of room in this thing. In fact, I think the, the lid is off this. Yeah. Okay. You see, there's not there's not a lot of room in this thing. It's very very thin. Um, but a Raspberry Pi Zero should fit in there, I think. Um, and we can replace the the outputs on here with some HDMI, probably over in this bit where the expansion port is. So I'll probably do a fancy three D print for that as well um and get that working um i don't know if this keyboard is is okay i know the machine is not i know there is something wrong with this machine that's why it's open um so if i can't repair it um which i'm thinking i'm probably not going to be able to do because i did have a look at the memory chips and they all seem to be fine uh, i did replace the ula that was fine and i did do some recapping of the the problematic um the problematic uh, capacitors and they they had a pro they, there were no problem there as well so I'm not sure what it is, um, uh, but if the if the membrane is all right then I'll connect this up to a custom rig and we'll build build a system out of that so 
Um, found out today that the left and right keys will advance frame on a pause YouTube. Yes. Yes, it is uh, a useful thing to know that as well. I think it was a while before. Um, it was a while before I found that out as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, Boomer. <laughs> Uh, Aravun's just blown up, so that's the end of my Spectrum Next. I'm going to get a Spectrum Next, but it's going to be uh, a core for the Mega 65. I'm not going to buy the, buy the hardware. We'll just wait for the Mega 65 core. Just because I, I think it'd be funny emulating a, a modern retro machine on another modern retro machine. Uh, which will work one way but not the other, so that it will work on the. Oh, pardon me. It'll work on the uh, on the Mega sixty five, but the Spectrum Next shouldn't be able to emulate the uh, the Mega sixty five just because it doesn't have enough speed for it. So. Uh, da -da -da. Oh yeah, I'm going to keep them burning. I'm going to keep them burning by emulating a Spectrum on my C64, or my Mega 65 even. Um, yeah, the, 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 the old Spectrum Commodore Playground Wars were, uh, were kind of crazy. Um, and they still are, really. Uh, people do get really heated about them. I mean, I, I owned both. Um, I started on the Spectrum. I, I upgraded uh, to the C64. And, and, and there is the problem. The fact that I call, call it an upgrade, it upsets many of the Spectrum people. Who, for some reason, claim that the, the Spectrum is a superior machine, which it really isn't. I'm sorry, it really isn't. Um, it does some stuff really well. It's, it's very good at doing um, blitting. Um, but it's not very good at um, sound. It's it's also not got hardware sprites or hardware scrolling. So while it might be the faster machine, um, it loses out because it can't do some of the stuff in hardware. So you have to, you end up using that power to do other things, which is why there were so many kind of uh, flick screen isometric games on it because it was the one thing it was very good at doing um, because it didn't have to scroll. It was all done. Um, using fast blitters um, and something that the C64 struggled to do decently, um, at least until Last Ninja. Last Ninja kind of showed that we can do isometric games, but even then they were slow to load the screen. So I um, forgot what I'm looking for now. Oh yeah, the the, the UFO. Yeah, I, I'm not keen on the movement of the UFO, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit this a little bit. Um, question is how to edit this because at the moment it's just doing a left and right movement and checking uh i actually think i i put a random kind of movement into it and actually i don't like it now so it might even work if i just take that out but maybe faster but every command takes about 15 block cycles yeah yeah i really not i really don't enjoy z80 at all uh, sorry, Specomster. I'm not saying the Spectrum is a terrible machine. It's not at all. Um, it's just it's just that the Commodore is superior technically, hardware-wise. Um, I I played some games on the Spectrum that I really enjoyed. Uh, was it Head Over Heels? I really got into. Uh, that was an isometric game. There was uh, a couple of games I had on the Plus Three. I think I played Afterburner on the uh, on the Spectrum. It was very good as well. Um, but I did feel like I got an upgrade when I got the uh, the, uh I got the C sixty four. So <laughs> uh... 
Only medicine, good banter. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. I, I, you know, I had friends from both sides of the camp. I was lucky enough to kind of have tried both. Um, all right, let's mess with this this thing. So I, I kind of formed my opinion based on experience of both. But there was definitely people uh, from both sides who would um, would claim their machine was the best, having never even tried the other machine. And it's like you can't really give an objective kind of opinion if you if you've never uh if you've never played both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's poor CPC owners. I was just talking to Andy about that today because uh, the the guy who made Technoid had um had uh, an uh, Amstrad CPC four six four. Um, and I was saying that um you know my my cousins had a, a Amstrad CPC four six four. We used to go to their house for Christmas. Um, and I just used to spend all my time on their computer, uh, but it was not because it was a CPC. It was just because it was that, or or kind of deal with family. So it was just easier to be lost on that. And I, I played some decent games on that, but they were they were games that were available on other things. Like um, uh, Rockstar Ate My Hamster was one that I played on the CPC. Uh, And then they came with a couple of games uh, that you like. You got free with it. I think Oh Mummy was one of them, um, and I really liked that as well. I'd rather be on the computer than deal with fam. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what I did. So, um, and I got away with it. <laughs> they let me do it. So, fine by me. Annoyingly, as well, they had a green screen monitor as well, so they I, I couldn't even see the color in the games, which was very frustrating. Oh yeah, Spectrum Spectrum was definitely cheap. And that I, I actually think the, the price of the Spectrum kind of contributed a little bit to the the um the downfall of Commodore in a way, because Commodore tried as hard as they could to make the price low, and they did get it very, very low. Um, but it meant that that became the mentality at the company. Um and I think when Tramiel left they couldn't they couldn't keep that kind of thing going uh in the same way that he could. Um, and so they ended up releasing some very, very questionable hardware, uh, like the, um, uh, the, uh, Amiga CDTV, things like that stuff that really should have, um, should have done well, but they were just kind of marketed completely wrong. Um, the C65 would have done really well, but they, they brought it, brought it out way too late. Or they they started it way too late. By the time they were ready to kind of go out with it, it was um, the Amiga was already kind of taken over. But even on the Amiga, I think they made some weird decisions with the Amiga, which kind of contributed to the losses that Commodore were making as well. So, uh, okay, so this is the Flying Saucer. Um, so there's this expanse here, and there is a random here. Um, so this is randomly, let me just take that out. I think that should make it stop doing the random shift. So now she just move entirely across the screen or up to a wall and then back again. And then from there we can, we can start kind of moving the enemy up and down a bit as well. So this is going to go all the way across. I think, yeah, they're bouncing between the two sides. Okay, so we've got rid of that randomness. I'm going to leave the code in there commented just in case I want to reintroduce it, but I think it's probably better without. Um, so uh, let's let's create an index value in in here. So let's have um. Let's call it a wave index because that's what I want it to basically do. I want it to kind of wave up and down. And we'll start this on zero. Um, like so, there we go. So we've got a wave index now. Now, the idea of this is going to be that as the, um, as the enemy moves across the screen, this wave index is going to increase. Um, and this wave index is going to decide 
how much the the enemy moves up and down so let's get the wave index and let's do the increment here so let's put a little note in here. so um oops did you see my question uh, did you manage to trade sid chips Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Which which Sid chips? Hello, Shalom Futaki. Been playing Gran Turismo and, and talking to my psychiatrist. Okay. I'm really looking forward to uh, the Gran Turismo on the um, on the new. Oh, you were talking to DMX. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the new uh, Gran Turismo on the uh, on the PS5, which looks like it might be a launch title, uh, which is kind of exciting. I haven't really played a Gran Turismo properly since Gran Turismo 3, I think, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I will be doing some um, PS5 streams as well when, when it comes out. I will hook it up to this. I'm not going to put it inside this, like the PS4, probably just stick it on top. Uh, but I probably will do a couple of streams with some of the... Um, uh, a couple of streams with that, with that, that game. The PS5 that can't do 4K 60 hertz, of course it can do 4K 60 hertz. It's game dependent. It's 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 kind of this. This is what annoys me about the console wars, right? If you look at the the games on a PS5 and on an Xbox One Series X, I challenge you to look at that both pictures of a, of a static screen and tell, or even a moving screen. And tell me the difference between them two. I'm telling you now, 99.9% .9 of people are not going to be able to tell the difference between a machine that's running at 13 teraflops and one that's running at 11 teraflops or whatever the difference is. You're just not going to notice it. I'm sorry, you're not. Um, and there's other elements in it. Teraflops is not everything as well. So, yeah, I, I think it's kind of stupid. Um there is on the there's definitely a difference on on the on the current generation of hardware um yeah fifty minutes to the prize draw indeed but i think i think the the hardware is so close on the new systems that you're you're gonna struggle to tell a difference between the two um and it's going to come down to it's going to come down to whichever studio gets the most money from whichever um, console manufacturer to optimize for their system. It's going to come down to if it's support from a PC version. Um, you know, it's it's going to. It, I mean, the the simple fact is, if you want to play it, all these all these console nuts that are going Xbox is the best, PlayStation Five is the best. I'm sorry, PC is the best. Just deal with it. And Xbox people who say, well, Xbox is better than PC. No, actually, PC is, is better than the Xbox by a long shot because it can perform better than it and it gets all the exclusives that the Microsoft console gets anyway, which is why I tend to go for Sony because if I get a console, I'd rather have a console where the exclusives I can't get anywhere else. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, and, and exactly, DMX. A console is pretty much a PC nowadays, anyway. Yeah, exactly. This is why I go for PS PlayStation every time because I know with PlayStation I'm going to get exclusives that I can only play on the PlayStation. With Microsoft, even if an exclusive is Xbox only, it will end up on the on on the PC eventually, um, and that's not the case with with PlayStation. So. But there's going to be so little difference between them. I don't know what people are arguing about. They just like to fucking argue with people. Stupid. Right. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna increment this value. So we're just gonna uh, add one to it, and we are gonna put it back. But first of all, we need to check that this value is within a range. So, uh, did you do a raffle yet tonight? I have done one already. Yes, I did one after my first break. I'll do another one. Um, in fact, I'm gonna take my next break a little bit early. I'm gonna go in a few minutes for it. Because uh, I'll have another break um, just before midnight, um, and then I'll do the uh, I'll do the draw. So, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what do you think? Oh my god, Andy, have you had a shandy? I told you about that. No, I'm still going sober. <laughs> How are we doing with entries, by the way? Are we what's what are we looking at here? Um, oh wow, fifty nine entries by the looks of things. I don't know how many of them are invalid. I think I don't think anybody's bought four tickets. I think people have learned. There was a couple of people who bought more than more than three tickets last time. Um, just so you know, if you do buy more than more than three, you will be charged, but you will not have an extra entry in the competition. Three. Three is the only um, number that, that, that counts here. Uh, it looks like there is actually somebody who bought four. Yeah, a Cosmin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so unfortunately you will be charged for that third one, but you, uh, you, will only, you will only get three entries into the competition. So the way the competition works is it just builds an array um, of all the, all the ticket entries. Oh, DMX won a quarter of a million points then on Doc. Very nice. Moved up to second in the board. Very, very nice. <coughs> um, and if you, as it, as it adds as it adds entries into the array, if it sees somebody's added three, that it stops them adding any more. So you you won't get any extra entries there, which is why you're seeing uh fifty eight tickets uh on the screen, but I'm seeing um sixty in my list. Um, ah, uh, sixty. So it's somebody's. Oh, uh, maybe it's. Uh, Mitsuyama's just bought another one, so maybe that's just a little bit behind, that's all. Hopefully everything works well in the in the overlay. I, I've done a couple of um, checks today um, just to make sure it works. Um, but obviously I haven't tried this in the in the real uh, real life scenario, so fingers crossed everything goes to plan when there's no no mishaps but i do have a backup of all the data here um in my request panel so um i should be able to recreate the draw if i need to and it might take me a little bit longer because i have to do it manually okay so the wave offsets is basically going to be kind of like the jump table so we're just going to have a value that we add or subtract from uh, whenever we do the movement. So we do this update position thing here. Um, I'm basically going to update this so that it will uh, it will allow us to move this enemy up and down. So let just find the update position in here. Update position, here we go. Uh, where's the actual, where's the actual entry point for this? X pos Y pos. Okay, so first pos is a null. Let's take position. So if they're both null, it goes to this one. And um, this one takes, where is it? So it's the accumulator. Okay, so so whatever we put in the accumulator when we call this function is what's going to end up being uh, the movement as it moves across the screen. Um, so actually, interesting, this should probably be a, a load accumulator with zero here because I'll have to check that. Um, okay, so let's put some values in here. So um, if we start in the middle, we're going to have that's uh, an intro speech. I'd love to know whose voice that is. Who was it who did that? Somebody must have got credit for that somewhere, right? Cool. So we've got 26 people have entered this name with a grand total of 60 tickets. Um, so if you bought three tickets, you've got a one in 20 chance of winning. Um, 
Which ain't bad odds, really, considering. I'd love to know why my, my follower and uh, update thing is broken up there. I'll have to look into that. Okay, so basically we, we're going to have some uh, changes in, in position here. So um, we're going to move down slowly, speed up a little bit, top speed, then back again. And back to the zeros again. Actually, I'll keep the zeros in the middle. That makes more sense. Oh, actually, no, it really doesn't matter. There still needs to be zeros in the middle. And then it's it's the other way. So this will be minus one. So let's do it on the next row. In fact, if I do like this, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, minus three. Cool. So this will give us uh, a range of offsets. Now, it's probably worth noting as well, for those who don't know already, uh, if you put minus one in, in a byte field like this, uh, what Kick Assembler actually does is it converts it to FF. It just does the two complement version, uh, the, 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 the signed integer, signed 8-bit signed integer version of minus one. So it actually does the conversion for you. <laughs> that was a test stream. <laughs> Remember the days when there weren't even 20 people here? <laughs> Actually, the the first person to see me streaming uh, was Hayes, who um, I was streaming. I was streaming some random games. I was going through um, the, the uh, C64 compendium. Um, and it was probably about three months before I actually started doing the coding streams. And Hayes just happened to, to come into the, the stream. I had no mic. I had no camera on. It was just literally just just me playing playing a game with a chat box at the side. Um, and I didn't even realize at the time it was Hayes because I, I, I didn't know who Hayes was at all. So it was only um, recently, I think Hayes mentioned it a couple of months ago. And I went back and had a look um, at the stream, and it was indeed Hayes that had, that had appeared. Yeah, it was Jupiter Lander, that's right, yeah. I like that game. I, I really like that game. I think it's a, a really good example of, um, of some of the Commodore kind of capabilities. So, yeah. And Gildan as well. Okay, cool. I didn't know Gildan had popped in. Yeah, it was uh, it was weird that I, I kind of did that for a little while and nobody ever watched. So I just kind of I just stopped doing it after a while. Um, and then I I started watching Hayes instead. Um, what am I doing here? And then I ended up realizing that maybe I should just do a coding stream. People would probably like that. And here we are now. So. Oh, this is a good version of the Night Rider theme. All right, I'm going to go and take a quick break. When I come back, we'll sort the wave out. Um, I'm taking a break a little bit early now because I'm going to have another one um, just before midnight. Uh, so I'm going to go for a break just before the draw, um, and then we'll do the draw um, on midnight or just after midnight. Um, and hopefully somebody will win the first time round. Uh, fingers crossed. All right, I'll be back in uh, two or three minutes, guys. Be right back. Oh, big bet on Bub there. Who's that? DMX. <laughs> oh, I thought you had it. I thought you had it. Okay, so we're doing uh, this wave thing. Okay, so I want to compare the wave offsets. Uh, actually, it's that, isn't it? Ooh, I've lost it already. Where's it gone? So 
So this is just looping through. This is making sure that this value is looping through in memory. Uh, and then I think all I need to do here is add that value. So if I just do uh, a get static memory with our wave index, whoops, that might be enough. Let's have a look. But this isn't going to have any collision uh, vertically. So this is probably going to go through platforms and stuff. So we'll need to we'll need to do that separately. So yeah, you've got about 34 minutes left to enter the competition, guys, if you've not already. Um, uh, if I have a number of arguments for my... Oh, set static memory, set static memory. I think that needs to be null for it to use the value in the accumulator. Yep. Turrican has not won tonight. No. That just means he's due a win, right? That's how it works. Oh, okay, right. So it's now using... <laughs> okay, that's very wrong. Okay, very, very wrong indeed. Okay, so... Where are we updating? So we're doing the update here. Um... I need to work out which value we should be passing in for the update position. So this is the function that gets called uh, and it actually adds the accumulator to... Um, ah, okay. Instead of... So instead of this, what we should be doing is this. Um, but also what we need to do here um this is gonna this is barely gonna move this is gonna be moving fractionally so we're not gonna see um much vertical movement if anything here so we just need to we need to update a, a little bit i think hey fistmaster you like the new stream layout yeah oh oh <laughs> okay okay so it's definitely affecting the the y position there um, but it's doing it in a horrific way. Um, let's have a look. Let's just try loading Y with 1 and see what happens here. Oh, because we're loading the wave index. Ah, okay. So this is the problem. Um, let's just see, let's see how this, how this works. Why is your GPU fan worrying? Um, depends. Depends what you're doing. I think Twitch is quite heavy though. Actually, I think it's. I I think the the video stuff is is a, uh, is quite heavy on the GPU. Okay, so this is kind of doing the right thing. Um, I mean, obviously, so you can see a flicker as these sprites cross this boundary down here, um, which is a problem we do need to deal with. Um, but I think we can probably get away with it for the most part at the moment. Wake me up <laughs> before you go. He requested this, Acknafin. Yeah, three tickets max, yeah. You can buy more than three, but you um it was reminded to wake me up before giveaway. <laughs> so we need to load the accumulator with the wave offsets, comma y. Is it my eyes or is the hood bouncing? It, it is bouncing when things when sprites cross that boundary. <laughs> which is something we might need to deal with. Uh, I think it's a problem now because the sprites are, are not falling through. They're moving quite slowly past it. So um, it, it is a problem. Um, but I, th I think we, we might be able to solve it just by fixing this, this behavior a little bit here now. So 
there we go. So now we've got we've got a. I much prefer that movement. Um, I actually kind of want it to be more than that. I want it to to go more. Um, let's let's make it bigger and have a look. Okay, so this is the the wave offsets that we're using here. So I'm going to add an extra two into each layer, uh, culminating in it moving quite fast towards the end. Um, that should be enough, I think. That's probably already quite a lot more than two, two. Actually, I'm going to put this on another line just so I can see the second half. So three, two, one, one. Okay, so we need to do the same, but in reverse. So I'm, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this here. Uh, I'm just putting the minus in front of them all. This is Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. This is not a bad version of it as well. Pretty accurate. So the problem we've got now is that um, it's it's going through the scenery. Um, which is why we're seeing these weird bounces because it's actually changing direction when it goes through the scenery. So we need to make it um, not move if there is, oh God, this is going to be tricky actually. Ah, no, no, it's not actually. I think it's going to be fine. So what we need to do, so at this point here, this is where we're going to actually do the movement. Um, but now in the Y, Y here contains either a positive or a negative number or a zero. Um, Thank you. It's a C64C, but I, I, I see what you were trying to do, but uh, it read it out as C64D. Uh, is it necessarily bad that the flying saucers can do that? Uh, what, move through the scenery? I would rather they didn't move through the scenery. I'm going to try something to, uh, to, to, to fix it and see how it works. Uh, thank you for the bits, uh, Amok. Um, unfortunately, it's not me. You need to uh, you need to uh, corrupt. It would be the uh, it would be the random number generator built into uh, built into OBS's browser. So, ah, Turrican one. Who bet on Turrican? Mister G, DMX, Brow, and Eldritch. <laughs> Told you it was due one. Be a lot more dangerous if you can't hide on a platform. Yeah, that's true. The problem is, is if it goes through a platform, it's also going to change directions, um, which is something. Actually, maybe actually, let's try that. So, so at the moment, it changes direction because it checks collisions um, on either side. Um, so. Collision points X comma Y. So there must be some collision points up here. Yeah, see, so it's checking either either side here. Um to see if it should it see if it should bounce. Uh but what we can do before it does the bounce is we can we can check both sides and if both sides are are blocked then it and then it wouldn't do any um any of these collisions. So let's let's check that. Let's do Let's do that. So um, we need to do this twice, basically.
Now, um, hmm. we could be sneaky about this because if we're going to do this check, then we've already got the information that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually store them in this position here. Now, even though this is a is a shared routine, these values would only ever be read once within here. So this is a perfectly valid place to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the value on this side. I'm going to check it. Uh, and it with this, and then I'm going to store that at collision values plus zero. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, plus one, like so. So this is going to be, give me the collision on both sides. Now, first of all, I just want to check that this is working correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the original movement back. Oops, I'm going to put a little note in here. Uh, and then that means here I don't need to do this bit here. Um, what I can do instead of doing that is just load collision values comma y, and that should give us the same same behaviour as as uh, as before. But now we're looking at both sides. Uh, couldn't create. Wait, what? Okay, that was strange. I'm not sure why. So 23 minutes to go, guys. I'm going to go for a break in about 20 minutes. Um, so you'll have probably three minutes before midnight. Um, and then I'll do the draw. So hopefully these should just move like normal, which they are doing. They're moving backwards and forwards. Great. Okay. So that means that value is being stored correctly. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I'm probably check that video. It's got what video? What are you on about? I'm intrigued now. I don't know what that video is now. I need to know. I'm not going to click it. I don't know what it is. Boss Mitch said to say, Where are my keyboard's headphone inputs? So <laughs> I found out the other day as well that this is uh, a USB on the back, my keyboard. I didn't realize. So now I've got my um, my other camera plugged into it, which is it's good. So it's a little USB hub. I didn't even realize it had it. It also has a, a little setting so I can switch between three different configurations of the keys. Don't know why, but. Um... It's safe. I don't know what it is, though. I don't know what I'm clicking on. So let's have a quick look. Oh, it's your own tell. Okay. Okay. I will have a look at that at some point. Does it turn off the bloody RGB? Yeah, I can set it to, to do that. I like my RGB. I like it on my keyboard. I'm the mother flipping rhinoceros. Oh, a bit of Flight of the Concords. Very good. I appreciate anybody who likes Flight of the Concords. And people are very divided about them. There, um, some people absolutely love them. You either absolutely love them or you hate. Them. I'm firmly in the love them camp. I think they're the best thing ever <laughs> to come out of New Zealand and actually the Southern Hemisphere. While we're at it, um, I think they're great. I just wish they'd have done more shows, but I get their decision not to. Um, I went and saw them at Wembley not long ago, actually last year sometime. Was it the year before? I remember. But it was it was pretty good. Um, okay, so now we have both of those. What we can do is before we go into this routine, um, we can and the value that's in here with the value that's in collision values plus zero, and then if we compare that to collision solid and it's it's equal to zero then we can go to x bounds because that means that um that means that only one side is blocked and we can go and do do this but either one or no side is blocked otherwise we can skip the x bounds completely 
uh, and jump to exit bounce. And what this should mean is that it will only bounce off scenery uh, and change directions if it's blocked on one side. So if I restore the uh, the weird movement that we had, which was completely lost where it was now, here, um, hopefully it should move through the platforms but maintain that kind of that wave movement which should create a slightly different look to the the behaviors you can see how when it gets to the edges it kind of does try and change direction but now they're going off screen which is not good they shouldn't be going off screen Okay, that's that's a worry. Because when they go off screen, they start appearing in this side of things. So, um, okay, I kind of like the movements so far, but I think we need to do some extra checks. So there is a check for screen edge um, that we can do somewhere. Uh, check screen edges here. Um, so I think if I just put that in, let me just think, if I put it in here, then it will still reverse when it hits the edge of the screen. UFOs can do these movements. Yeah, they can indeed. <laughs> well, so we assume they can. No, I see there's still it's still mutant yeah. I'm not I'm not entirely convinced by that. I think I would prefer it if they didn't didn't move through the platform. Um Okay, so let's let's cancel that. Let's go a different way about this. Okay, so I'm gonna restore the original code. Get rid of this whole section here. Um, actually, is it is it even bouncing off the screen edges? That's a good point. If they come out and they just move horizontally, actually, they're not going to move horizontally now, are they? Hang on. Do they go off the screen edges? So this, the one that comes out here, could potentially go off the edge of the screen here. So oh, typical. Oh, and yeah, you see this one is bouncing off the edge on this side. Let's restart. I want to. I want to see one come out of this pipe and go to this edge here. Okay, so this one moves all the way across the screen. And bounces up. So it does bounce off the edges. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do instead. So I'm gonna I'm gonna restore that weird movement again. So this is the movement we're trying to fix. By the way, after the stream tonight as well, I will play some more Parasol Stars. I want to keep playing that game until um, I can complete it consistently. Oh, it's going through the platforms again. I don't know why it's going through the platforms. Oh, no, it is, it is going to go through the platforms, okay, but it is going to change direction, which is why it looks like it's just going straight when it goes through them. Um, it's just because... Um, it's because it's changing directions very quickly left and right, so it just goes straight down basically instead of um, 
So here I would expect some different behavior depending on if it's going up or down. So let's let's try and get that in place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm I'm gonna check collision points again. Uh, but this time I'm going to check up and down instead of instead of left and right. And we've got we've got collision points Y in here. We'll keep the collision values. So actually this this kind of routine up to this point anyway uh, can stay the same. So on top and bottom. Uh, and this time we're checking collision points Y instead of collision points X. Um, which also means that this needs to be on this is our y position so this needs to be got no that is our i think that needs to be that and i think that needs to be that accumulator is x y is vertical yeah so this is our vertical vision points yes yes x can be c which is fine Um, so that's C is, yeah, that should be fine. Packland, oh my god. <laughs> I did enjoy Packland. This is bloody hard, that's all. Alright, there we go. First bottle of wine there. It's a large glass, but it's almost a tank engine. Wow. <laughs> So now we have um, top and bottom stored in these two values here. Um, don't want to do any of this here, so that can, that can go. But what we do need to do um, is when we apply the movement, so this actually probably needs to happen before we apply the movement, which is here. So we'll do this collision check here. Then when we apply the movement, what we need to do is we need to check um, if we're moving up or down. So we can do that by um, checking the value in Y, which has just been set. So we can do, if this is minus, well, actually, if it's if it's zero, that means there is no movement left and right. So we can, we can just jump straight to um, apply movement. Because if it's zero, it doesn't really matter. All we need to do now is we need to set zero if we need to cancel movement. Uh, how do we know that? So if if the value is negative, then we jump to neg, and this will be pos. Okay, so a negative movement means that we need to check above us, and a positive movement means we need to check below us. So what we can do is we can load the value in here for positive and compare it to this value. Oops. Uh, and if it is, if it's equal to zero, then again, we go to apply movement. Otherwise, we'll go to cancel movement. Uh, and then we do the same here, but we don't need to do the jump because we're right above it. But this time we check above us instead. And hopefully now this should stop them moving vertically through um, through the scene. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left to the giveaway. So I'm going to go for a break in about five or six minutes. And then we'll do the giveaway. Um, okay, nothing is being applied here. Okay, why is nothing being applied here? Uh, if it's equal to zero, we go to here. Otherwise, we come to here. So it seems like this is being hit all the time, this cancel movement. Uh... Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, uh. Turn. Uh, no, let's not turn that off. Let me think about this. How are we doing for entries? We've got 27 people entered, 63 tickets. Channel 50k didn't register, gotta help me. Uh, what didn't register? Let me know what didn't register. Was it an entry, a ticket entry? Oh, what commands number four, Sid? Uh, let me see if I can see that. Uh, I'm trying to see where you put the request in. The commands number four, and it didn't find it. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. No, I didn't find it for me either. That's weird. Try the try the try the full path to it. That's probably the uh the easiest way. Just put the full path in and then add the add the number on the end. Oh, DMX, you're on a roll tonight. <laughs> uh God, I'm getting a bit of a headache from that one. Um, okay, so this should be moving up and down, and it's not doing. Um, the Y value here should be set in the, the vertical movement. Um, I mean, if I just if I just negate that completely and just do uh, jump to apply apply movement, we should get that movement back. I think the problem is, is it's cancelling the movement all the time for some reason. Okay, let me. If you post the post the the, the full path uh, in the chat, and I will um, I will queue it from my side. Oh no, hang on, it did queue it. I have queued it, so it should be in the next it should be in the next one. So, is it Jonathan Don? If it's Jonathan Don, then it's queued. I keep forgetting when I when I when I add something to the queue, I actually I actually put something in first place in the queue. So yeah, it was number four. It doesn't show as number four in the queue, but I added the number four at the end. So. Okay, so that movement is there, um, but for some reason, when I try and check this value, these values are definitely stored, definitely retrieved correctly as well. Mm. Let's put a break point. Let's see what's going. On. I'm going to go for a break in a, in a minute. Um, I'll wait for the next tune to start and then I'll go for a break. I just want to make sure that it's the right tune. Actually, I don't know what number four is, but. Uh, oh, okay. So it's given us collision. Oh, that's not helpful at all, actually. Uh, sort it, sort this out when I come back. Um, let's just wait for this next tune to start. There, I go for a break. When I come back from the break, I will close the uh, the entries. I'll pause the Sid music and we'll do the giveaway. So, a few seconds left on this tune. Also, get a bottle of wine while I'm at it. This is the one.
All right, I'll be back in a few minutes, guys, and then we'll do the giveaway. All right, I'm back. Let's let this race play out. And then I'll pause the music and we'll do the giveaway. Let me close the entries. Oh, and Turrican wins it. Anybody bet on Turrican? <laughs> so I see you won on that. Oh, some big winners there. Uh, Mr. G with 60,000 on that as well. Our biggest winner on that. Very nice. Okay, guys, this is it. So let's give the music a pause. Uh, find the pause button. There we go. Now, fingers crossed this works. We've got 28 entrants, 65 tickets. So you've got about, uh, if you bought three tickets, just over one in 20. One in 22, roughly, um, chance of winning. Um, hopefully this all works. I really hope it works. <laughs> Um, let's give it a try. Let's see. Okay. Good luck guys. Amok. Well done, Amok. You're the proud owner. Should you reply? I'm, I'm pretty sure you will. You have. Well done. Um, you're the proud owner of a C64C Raspberry Pi. Well done, dude. Well, very well deserved. Uh, couldn't have gone to a better person. He's been one of the biggest donators of the channel. So um, I'm very pleased with that. So if you uh, just send me your details in private message sometime, I'll make sure this gets shipped out to you um, pretty soon. Um, sometime this week. I need to do some final tests on the joystick. Um <laughs> <laughs> I like the way text-to-speech says your name. It's very funny. But yes, well done, Amok. I'll get this shipped to you um, sometime this week. Like I say, I'm going to... Um, let me just turn off the uh, off the thing now. It should hopefully turn off in a second. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just need, The only thing I've not tested is the joystick, so I just need to do a quick test to make sure the joystick is all working fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will be doing... Um, but the, the hardware is set up. It does come with a UK plug. I believe you're in France, aren't you, Amok? So. <laughs> I should have a one minute thing next time. I should I'll just keep it going for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, the thing is, is I, the, um, I ported the, um, I ported the the code over from my original one and just stuck it in this overlay uh, pretty quick this 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 afternoon. So um, I, I might actually update it to be a bit more kind of glamorous and stuff. So um, so next time it's a, it's a bit more kind of uh, suspenseful. But yeah, well done, Amok. Uh, like I say, very well deserved. Um, uh, like I say, it does come with a UK plug, so you probably need an adapter to to plug it in, um, or you can just provide your own as well. But the reason um, the reason I'm going to provide a plug is because it does come with the inline switch, which is really useful for um, turning it on and off. Because the the switch on the side, what is originally the power switch, is actually a mode switch for the key. So this switch here um isn't actually a power switch it's a mode switch um i will i will put the uh instructions uh i'll print them out from bmc i will print out the, the key R instructions so you know what all the different modes do um and you should be able to uh have that uh pretty soon i should guess so i'm so happy can you can you dedicate it for you what do you mean dedicate it for you <laughs> Shipping for UK power plug twenty two pounds, yeah. Oh, sign it. You want me to sign it on the back? Yeah, sure, I can sign it on the back if you want. Um, my signature is a mess, but yeah, sure, I can sign it. 
just let me know what let me know what you want me to write i'll uh i'll sign it and just let me know where you want me to sign it as well because i don't want to like s sign it somewhere you don't want me to i've got a sharpie so i'm sure i can sign it but yeah no problem at all um can you desecrate it for him <laughs> write lot frog lobster on it <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm I'm pleased that worked. So, um, <laughs> sixty four thousand pounds. I doubt it. I doubt my signature is worth sixty four thousand uh, pounds. But yeah, ab absolutely. Just uh, like I say, send me a a, a message on uh, Discord. Um, uh, let me just complete all those entries. There we go. Uh, send me a message on Discord, and I will I will get that set up for you uh, as soon as possible. Like I say, I'll probably ship it towards the end of the week. It'll probably be Friday that I ship it to give me enough time to do some final tests on it and print out all the documentation for it as well. Uh, the documentation is just going to be from the GitHub page for BMC and for um, uh, uh, the Kirar as well. So. Uh, oh no, let's do let's do another points raffle. There we go. Points raffle. But yeah, well done. Well done, Amok. Let's get the music back on. Uh as I say, I don't know what the next uh the next giveaway is gonna be. I think it's probably gonna be a book giveaway this time. Um I'll have a think about what books I want to give away um and how best to do that. Um <laughs> I knew that would make Andy excited because uh, I'm probably going to do it with um, shipping from Amazon. So it's going to probably be books from Amazon that I ship to an address uh, so I don't have to deal with the, 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 the shipping kind of complications. So um, I'll try and make them all Commodore related books or, or assembly related books. So um, they'll be relevant, hopefully. Um, and I, I think as you're, I think you're in France, aren't you, Amok? So I, as you're in France, I will ship with probably DHL, I think, uh, just to make it a bit easier. Because if I, if I try and ship through, um, Hermes, I wouldn't trust them with international ship. I don't mind for, for domestic shipping, but international shipping, I would not trust them with at all, especially not something which is relatively delicate. So. Um, but yeah, I've got the box and everything ready to go. So yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, well done, Amok. Uh, thank you for the follow, MB Dealer. I missed that one. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciated. All right, let's get back to uh, what we were doing. Let me just get my views correct on this screen. There we go. Cool. uh yeah <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't trust hermes to deliver dog shit to a bin in the park yeah they're terrible they're not too bad for some things so i shipped uh mitsuyama's um prize which was the the last giveaway uh because it was games it was kind of it, it, they already come in boxes anyway which are quite protective um and i just put a little bit of kind of bubble wrap around a few things in there just to kind of pack the box out i kind of trust hermes to do something like that um and and domestically as well but um internationally absolutely no chance i wouldn't trust them at all um dhl is probably the best option i've got here the congratulations already play if so i missed it <laughs> french customs will burn it <laughs> i hope not um but when i ship it, i'll give you uh, i'll give you all the um tracking information as well so you can you can check it Do you, do you know what put me off using Hermes? I, I did a lot of um, C64 uh, Ebays uh, probably about two years ago. Uh, and what Hermes do is they, they hire people to use their own vehicles to, to collect parcels and deliver them, right? Um, and I used Hermes because they've got a pretty good collection system. You can, you can, you can purchase, um, purchase shipping for collection and they will come to your house, pick it up and... and deliver it and it's it's not a bad system to be honest um but i i remember shipping uh, it was a c64 with a 1541 drive um two joysticks and a tape deck and it was all packed nicely in a box um 
it was it was well packed. It was you know it was bubble wrapped. The things were individually bubble wrapped, and there was a packing peanuts in there as well. But when I looked out of the window, I I, I gave the the guy the pass, and I looked out the window. He he turned up in some Mondeo estate or something like that. And the thing was jam packed with parcels. There was no room in it at all for parcels. And I watched him as he pushed it up against the rest of the parcels and just kept hitting it and pushing it and hitting it and then jammed the door on it. And the box was just crushed to buggery. And I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. This is terrible. So I just, from now on, I just thought, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, small parcels that, uh, that, that aren't delicate then fine but anything in certainly international and anything with uh any kind of fragility then no Free sixty four probably use royal mail but royal mail don't do collection and i'm still not brave enough to go to the um uh go to the post office yet um so i'm going to do it through dhl because i think dhl will collect as well uh, DHL aren't bad. DHL have got um better ship, uh, better tracking than uh, Royal, Royal Mail tracking is terrible. It annoys me that in in the year that we're in, when even Hermes can give you kind of very accurate to the almost to the hour tracking, um, that that Royal Mail just basically tell you what day is coming on and that's it. All I ask Amok is when you get it, just post something. Uh, with a link to the stream or something on Twitter or whatever social media of your choice, um, just to let people know and to let me know that you've got it as well. Um, anyway, right, let's get back to what we're doing. So, um, okay, so we're trying to just apply the vertical movement um, only if it's free to move in that direction. And for some reason, it's showing us not free at this this point. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just put a marker in here. Uh, and I want to have a look. Actually, let's not put it there. Hmm. So I'm grabbing the point. This is our horizontal. This is our vertical. Uh, uh, dick pick with a C6. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> uh, it's that what you're pointing to, Andy? I'm going to play Parasol Stars later steps. I'm going to keep playing that until, um, until basically I know everything. No, Mad Beagles. What did Mad Beagles say? Uh, oh, should those branch of equals be branch of not equals? Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe that's the problem here. So let's think about it. Um, no, because if the com if there is no collision there, then it will be. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Sorry, you are right, Mad Beagle. Awesome bonus points to Mad Beagle there. I was thinking they were ands, and they're not their comparisons. So and the dick pics. <laughs> so that might be it that might just be it yeah Bon bonus points to bonus amk points to mad beagle there we go now they're actually stopping when they hit the floor so so they'll just glide across uh points where they hit as well so one of the things i'm noticing a lot with these enemies is they are getting stuck in um in certain places like this and we we had enemies getting stuck over here as well um i'm not sure how to solve this because the only way i can think to solve it is to give them some random movement every now and again um actually we had a random movement didn't we let's put the random movement back in Let's make it a bit less frequent and see what happens. Hopefully this should stop them getting stuck in places. So Reduce the bounce amplitude. Yeah, so I did that the, the first time. And it looked pretty good, but it wasn't it wasn't kind of there wasn't enough vertical movement going on. So now they should kind of change directions a lot as well. We should hopefully help with them getting stuck. So if they do get stuck in a place, they'll occasionally just 
randomly change direction, which should hopefully get them out of there now and again. So like here, this guy now, he would not, oh no, see, he's he's got out. Yeah, this, okay. Let's just leave it for a little bit, see if any gets stuck anywhere. I do think the amplitude needs reducing a little bit, so just a little bit too high. Um, but not by much. Okay, so this guy is stuck over this side and the random movement changes direction. That's good. Okay, let's 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 actually reduce that down a little bit. Um so I'm just gonna take one off each of these. <laughs> There's your congratulations. That's what it needs. It does need some extra um some extra stuff at the end, does it? It needs like a, yeah, maybe the congratulations tune is a good one. But it just makes me think of weddings. Sweet, sweet. Okay, that's reduced it a little bit. Let's see what difference that's made. Yeah, it's this, it's the wedding song. Do you know my biggest worry with the giveaway? And this is no no kind of um, disrespect to Mitsuyama at all. Uh, but my biggest worry was that Mitsuyama would win it again, and you guys would think it was rigged. Um, just so you know, if Mitsuyama had won it again, he I would have absolutely honoured it, and he would have absolutely got it because I I have complete faith in the uh, in the algorithm. Um, but I was I was just worried that the uh, that the the one in twenty chance of him winning it again would happen, and um, and you guys would be like, "Oh, it's rigged! It's rigged!" <laughs> no, no, no. Although interestingly, Mitsuyama does live close to where I used to live, which is kind of cool. I don't know him at all, though. Just just to be just to be straight there, <laughs> I don't have a brother. Wish I did have a brother. My sister was a pain in the ass. Okay, I, I kind of like that. The movement is enough that it's kind of random and, and hard to predict, um, but kind of smooth enough that it feels okay. Um, yeah, I'm all right with that. Um, what's this Sekinoid part I read about on Twitter? What game is the main inspiration to Sekinoid? I recognize the egg spaceship. Um, so Sekinoid is based on um, Cybernoid. It's it's a kind of it's a it's a modern version of Cybernoid for um, uh, for the PC. Uh, it's also coming out on Switch, I believe. Um, I think I know it's out on Android uh, and iOS. It might be coming out on Switch as well. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but basically, it's a Cybernoid game, so it's it's a it's a modern version of uh, Cybernoid. <coughs> with elements of um of, of kind of robotron in there as well um so thalamus published the the mobile versions um it is coming to switch to i thought so um thalamus published the um the mobile versions of it um and andy spoke to me uh earlier this week about potentially doing a c64 version uh as a as a way to kind of do some um I do some work for Thalamus uh, in a time when I'm actually struggling to do any work at all. Um, but by doing it on stream, it'll allow me to actually focus on it a little bit. Although my focus on this game tonight is terrible. So <coughs> Eldritch, two shimmer shillings. <laughs> uh, doubled up by steps as well. Okay, this this I'm quite pleased with this now. This looks okay. Um, actually, do you know the only thing I'm tempted to do here is change the sprite frame based on 
the direction it's moving. Because at the moment it's just kind of randomly flapping around. So maybe we can maybe we can change the sprite based on the movement as well. <laughs> so let's let's have a look at doing that. It might be quite easy to do, I think. Um, so at the moment we're setting the enemy frame based here. Um, and we've actually got three frames. So this is kind of perfect. Um, so if I get rid of this one here, which also means I don't really need to do any of this really. So let's just get rid of all of that for a second. And then in our movement here, so this is where we do in our movement. <laughs> We'll take this value. So what we'll do, we'll apply the the static frame. So let's let's assume that's the one in the middle. Uh, so let's do uh, plus one here. Uh, this is this is kind of what I wanted to do tonight. Anyway, I wanted to spend some time just getting these values to be. Um, I uh, don't know which way these are going to be around. Just I, I wanted to spend some time not getting the values, sorry, getting the enemy behaviors to feel uh, better. So <clears throat> Chat's kind of verbose on the plugins. Yeah, I might actually uh, I might actually change um, some of the stuff. I've been thinking this a lot because it's kind of hard to read it. So. Um... <clears throat> For instance, race results. Um, race results could quite easily be dropped into the race itself at the end, because uh, you guys, you guys see the result when the video is finished. So I could probably do that. Um, oh, can you mute? If I can mute it, that's really good. How do I do that? Because if I can mute him, uh, just in my stream, I don't want to ban it, obviously. But I'd, if I can mute it, then that makes it easy to read my chat. Uh, but I can remove some of the kind of because one thing I considered was having um, having Shimmerbot send you private messages uh, rather than spam the um, uh, spam the window. So like when you queue a tune, it would send you a private message. When you uh, <clears throat> when you bet on something, it would send you a private message. So I might do that in the next next stream. Um, just remove the chat messages, yeah. I'm thinking I, I can make it send you a private message. That's pretty easy to do. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I did originally do do it that way, but it was uh, there are limits on how many private messages you can send from a bot without it being without the bot being verified. So I'll have to make sure that it works. But I, I can probably move most of the messages into either private message or with race results actually in the in the race window itself. <clears throat> so I can have like um, a ticker in the bottom of the race while the bets are on so you can see who's betting on what. Uh, and then at the end of the race, when it says whoever's won, you can have a list of who's won and what, who's won what. But yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. I've also considered, um, so one of the things I've done a hell of a lot of in my, my career as a online gambling kind of coder is um make roulette games uh and slot machines as well but i'm not going to do that I've, I've i've done an, an awful lot of roulette blackjack and slot machines slot machines i probably will add at some point um but i'm kind of considering putting a roulette game in as well um so every now and again you'll get a a, a roulette kind of thing pop up instead of the race and you'll be able to um you'll be able to place bets in various areas and and such so we have a proper roulette not the crappy roulette that stream elements provides or whatever it is that provides it <laughs> thing is i've got four weeks off so i've got plenty of time to do these sort of things and this is the sort of crap i want to get done um okay i'm not sure that's showing the right frame let me slow this down
Oh, maybe it is actually. Yeah, that is showing the right frame. It shows. I need to have a look at the sprites. Oh, do I need to open it in that way? I mean, we need to use the new. Yeah, it does look, it looks all right, actually. I, I definitely prefer it to the original. Uh, thanks for your, thanks for your details, Emok. Um, cool. I will, I will make sure. Yeah, and I will add your phone number to the DHL thing as well. So you get updates. Thank you. And again, well done, Emma. You've been probably the biggest supporter of the Twitch channel. So I'm, I'm happy to see it go to you. I'm happy to see it go to anybody, but it just makes me smile a little bit extra when somebody who supports the channel like Emma does wins it. So, uh, okay. There we go. Okay. So we've got. Okay, no, this is this is fine. I feel like it's not showing the middle one very much though. Uh, which it should be shown by default here. Um, let's slow it down. I, I I can't tell if there's three frames or just one because the. Uh, the animation is kind of, uh, what's the word here? The animation is kind of, where's the actual bloody, there's a slowdown button on it. I'm sure there is. So the bottom, isn't it? There it is. I know it is. It's okay. No, this is fine. It's, it's going through the three frames. Yeah, this, this looks all right. I think it looks better than it did before anyway, which is good. Cool. All right. Um, awesome. Um, all right. <coughs> I'm not going to take a break now. I'm going to do it, do it on the hour because I can only smoke so much. Can I die? You want to see something? Okay. Uh, you mean in game, right? You you obviously don't you don't want me to die. Okay, good. Let's make it sure you never go. Can you die? <laughs> it's just a funny thing to ask somebody, isn't it? Can you die, please? So I think what I'm going to do next is uh, take a look at the um, I'm going to trigger the shape when a player dies to make it more dramatic. Uh, yeah, possibly. That's not a bad idea. I'll have a look at that in a second. Hopefully that code's quite easy to, to implement. There we go. Right, let's leave that open for a minute or two, let it breathe. Uh, let's just go there, I guess. Should the sources alter their Y coordinates too? Yeah, they're, they're moving in sync, aren't they? These two are moving very much in sync. Um, but I think it's... Actually, why are they moving in sync? I, I, in fact, how have we even got three up here? Where have they come from? So these these two are spawned. So one has come out of here and ended up up here somewhere. Interesting. Because I guess it's gone like this, and then it's flattened on here, and then it's gone up. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, that's not that's not a bad behavior. It makes it quite unpredictable. We need a Wilhelm scream on death as well.
Um, I'm trying to think how I can randomize the wire a little bit more because these two are very much in sync. And even when they go slightly out of sync, they catch up with each other because of the floor. I'll tell you what we can do. And this might look completely shit, but let's try it anyway. Um, so we've got this, uh, okay, we can get rid of all of that now. Don't need any of this. So we've got this thing that increments the value here. We can maybe change this. Um, so the way I'm thinking is, so if this value compares compares is equal and the carry bit is set, so in which case I can do a subtract uh, and subtract this value from it, which would, in most cases, when we're adding one, we just reset it back to zero again. But we can make this value change if if a random value is a certain value. So let's put normal. Uh, random done okay so now if i do uh jump to subroutine random uh and just compare that with i mean we're doing a we're doing a random check down here aren't we let's do the same kind of test here so let's, let's compare it to zero two uh and if it's more than that then we'll just go to normal we just we just carry on like normal otherwise what we can do is instead of adding two Let's just add, let's add this divided by two, because what that will do is it will give us um, a massive change in direction for the, hang on, let me think, if we're in this loop, say we're here, and we add half of the loop on, yeah, it's just going to change, it's just going to change directions. Okay, let's try that. That might be enough. Hey, Gunstar Heroes, how's it going? Welcome to the stream, dude. You just missed out on the big giveaway uh, where Amok won a C64 a Raspberry Pi custom built thing that we did. Oh, no, that's gone horribly wrong. That's gone horribly wrong. Uh, oh, well, first of all, we need to do a jump to done here. Um, Let's try it again. Oh God. I gotta say, I am really looking forward to doing second order. There's some interesting stuff that goes on in that game that I'm really, really looking forward to to giving it giving it a shot at. Uh, all right, maybe that's not the best thing. Let's just try. Let's just try a number in the middle somewhere. Yeah, progress has been um, a bit slow, uh, mainly because I've been distracted by the giveaway and um, I'm, I'm chatting a lot tonight. I think it's the red wine. No, it's, it's, doing, it's doing very strange behavior. Okay, let's... Uh, ah, okay, this is the problem because we're doing, we're doing a random here um, and basically changing this value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the Y register. Uh, and then I'm going to transfer it back here. So let me just undo the changes. There we go. So I'm going to put that in the Y register. And then I'm going to transfer it back. How have we got Thomas the Tank Engine on twice tonight? And who keeps requesting this? Steps requested this. <laughs> oh. Bit of axe left. I'm disappointed he's called it Beverly Hills Cop and not axe left. Oh no, that didn't go right at all. Oh, okay, right. There's some odd stuff going on here. Okay, let's just put one in here. Let's just so this should behave exactly as it did before now but with this extra random check in the middle.
which they are doing. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Let's just advance it a little bit. It only needs to advance a little bit to bring things out of sync, so... Which is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid the enemies sinking together and also give them a little bit of kind of ability to go down a little bit more or up a little bit more than they did before. So this should do that as long as the values are correct. So you see now how this guy is just kind of flicking between these two posts. Hopefully he'll reach a point where he hits that random number and just changes. Get out of the way so I'm not. But it's not doing... Oh, there you go. See, he broke out. Okay. Well, that makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, thank you for the follow, Dark Umbra. Uh, and welcome to the stream, dude. Oh, no. Something's gone wrong here. Well, I, I completely missed what happened there, but something went horribly wrong. Oh, God, what was that? Why did it do that? Okay, let's have a look. Ah, okay, I know what's going on here. So the problem is is the check that we're doing... Um, where is it? The check that we're doing here is checking if the value is not equal to. And what we should actually be checking is if it's less than that value. So that should fix that issue. Uh, I'm going to change this back now to, to this divided by 2 because I, I think this might work. Uh, essentially, what we're trying to do is make it change directions randomly. Same way we're changing directions uh, horizontally. I want it to change directions vertically as well. Also, while um, while I remember, if there's anything in particular you want me to add to the uh, the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, uh, Amok, just let me know and I can add it in. There's already a lot of stuff on there already. Um, it's a it's a nicely curated list of like the 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 best kind of games available. Uh, but if you want something, um, oh yeah, that's much better. They're quite random now. Kind of like that. Yeah, they look a lot better actually. They're very unpredictable as well, which makes them makes them quite a formidable enemy. Um, you can put a USB in the back of the uh, back of it anyway. So if there's anything in particular you want to test on it, like your own game, I know you're working on the tank game. Um, if you want to, um, <laughs> sort of, sort of. If you if you want to uh, test your own game, just put it on a USB stick, plug it in the back, and it should work. All you got to do is to enter the menu, press the Commodore key and F7 together. You enter the menu, and then from there it's straightforward. But I I will print all that out in the manual. I'm I'm quite pleased with this behavior. I think they're quite unpredictable now, uh, but not in a bad way. Like they, you you've just got to be careful around them. But all existing games published on itch. Oh, there you go. That's a good collection to get on a get on a USB stick. There is a thirty-two gig SD card inside it. Um, you can take it, if you take the case apart, you can take it out, but bear in mind that the Raspberry Pi is screwed to, well, it's actually glued to the uh, the 3D print um, face down, so you have to kind of have a little bit of dexterity to be able to pull the SD card out and get it back in again. Um, but like I say, it comes with US, two USB slots on the back, so you can uh, you can plug any joystick you want into it. You don't have to use the um, the, the Competition Pro. You can plug a, an Xbox pad in and, and set that up pretty easily, I reckon. Um, okay, this is... I'm quite pleased with them. All right, I'm going to move on to the next enemy then. I, I'm, I'm pleased with the randomness of them, so... They don't feel quite as annoying as they, they originally did. Yeah. I, I'm interested about the top of the screen. Do they stop at the top of the screen? Because it looked like one went off the top then. Like, I, I, in fact, I'm going to leave it for a little bit. I was kind of hoping that the joystick would be a micro switch version, 
um, but this is just a leaf switch version, which isn't, in my opinion, it's not as good. Uh, but they're still really nicely built uh, machines, uh, nicely built joysticks. So you should still be all right with it. A bit of bubble bobble like that. Yeah, some people do prefer leaf. I, personally, I, I don't. I, I do prefer the micro switch thing. There's just a feeling of certainty when you use a micro switch joystick. You know that you've your click has been registered. So. So what I'm looking for now is the ones that go off the top of the screen. Will they keep going up and up and up and appear at the bottom? Which is what I kind of want to avoid. Um, these definitely should be bouncing off the top and bottom of the screen. But um, I'm not sure how to do this easily. Um, Actually, bounce. Actually, no. They need to bounce off the bottom as well because there is a small chance they can appear in this gap here and bounce down. Although this doesn't, uh, this doesn't feel bad at the moment. So I'm, I think I'm going to move on to the next enemy um, and check check out. We we can we're going to do some play testing of this um, probably. Let's see. I think I'm going to have the editor done by the end of this month. Um, and then September will probably be spent. Actually, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm not going to do another enemy behavior. I'm going to do uh, some graphics. Um, I I think with the UFOs, I, I would maybe like them to bounce off the top and the bottom uh, just to prevent them kind of hovering around in this area here. It's fine for for the other enemies who kind of drop off the bottom here and appear back at the top um but these could potentially end up you see this kind of this wave formation that they're doing here they could essentially end up doing it here uh and just pop popping into the screen now and again which is a problem when you need to kill all the enemies on the screen to add advance so if one is hidden in the border up here that's going to get quite annoying but um What's the best looking C64 game from a graphics perspective? Ah, interesting. Um, I don't know. There's there's some good choices in here. I mean, the, the Roland Brothers games are always pretty good. Um, so Mayhem and Creatures, they were, they were very, very good graphically. Uh, yeah, Sam's Journey is very good as well. Sam's Journey feels like a NES game. Um, in fact, to a certain extent, it feels like a SNES game. It's it's uh, very, very good. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably say Sam's Journey is probably up there. I think Mayhem, Mayhem is very, very good. Uh, but it, it's not just the graphical style in it. It's the speed of it as well. It feels, it feels very console-y. Um, I think Features 2 is a beautiful game. Um, I think Turrican is a beautiful game as well. I think Turrican is very well made, uh, very nice graphically. Um, and then you've got the kind of slightly older games and, and uh, games that do things graphically that other Commodore games couldn't do, like uh, Last Ninja and, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that's... I'm trying to think of other games that kind of reach that kind of level. Um, Sam Fox Strip Poker, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Creatures 3 is amazing. Creatures 3 is very, very good. Oops. Yeah, Rainbow Islands was very good, actually. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, all right, I'm happy with those. So I'm going to do some... Uh, I'm going to do some background graphics, I think, there. Oops. Yeah, Rainbow Islands was very good. I I, I do definitely enjoy uh, Rainbow Islands and CC4. <clears throat> it's also quite an achievement as well. The stuff that they're doing in um, in Rainbow Islands is actually quite difficult to do on the C64. <laughs> Parasol Stars on the C64 uh, was amazing, but the noob never completed it. I will complete it. That's going to be the next Saturday game. That's the game we're going to continue. Um, 
who did the graphics on who's making the graphics on the parasol so so i've done the graphics so far on it um let's just show you that can i actually run it i might be able to run it on here i don't know let's give it a try do we even have it on here at the moment uh, i do okay cool <coughs> So, so far I, I've done all the graphics for this, um, but what I'm hoping will happen, uh, uh, see, uh, maybe not. Unexpected token tables. Oh, that's not good. Some kick assembly with incompatibilities. That's fine. I can just get the PRG from the. Uh, let's open up one thing, let's grab it from the folder. So yeah, I've, I've done the graphics for this so far. They're mostly based on <coughs> the Rainbow Islands graphics with some um, some extras like the backgrounds have been drawn by me. Um, <coughs> uh, so a lot of the sprites have been have been done by me, uh, except for Bob. Bob was, was quite easy to port, basically. Uh, that's a good folder. Oh, I don't have it. Okay. Actually, do not have it in, in a workable format. Okay, for some reason, Kick Assembly does not like um, something in the tables for some reason, which I don't understand. Why would that not work? That's very strange. So I just want to go and have a look at that because I'm a bit worried about that actually. Uh, if it's the, maybe it's the only thing that's that's broken. Let's, let's give it a try. That's one there. So this bit here, basically. Um, no, that didn't work, did it? Let's see what it's actually created. Uh, maybe that needs to be. That nah, doesn't work. All right. See, this is the sort of thing I need to look at. I need to look at why why these things have changed. Um, but yeah, I I did the original graphics for it as as far as it is there. But what I intend on doing on the on the stream on Saturdays is kind of getting everybody to join in with the graphics and sound for it um it's not going to be a game that i share on github because i i want to kind of finish it before uh laxi to get a hold of it um, uh, but yeah we will um i will i will kind of crowdsource a lot of it because there's a, a, this is one of the reasons why it, it started getting difficult because there was a lot of like sprites and things like that that were they were difficult to uh, draw myself. I struggle with it. So I think I managed to draw. In fact, let me show you the sprites. Um, I'm hitting this one probably. It's amazing how quickly I'm filling that freaking network drive. It's 24 terabytes. I've already filled six. And I don't know what I filled it with. I think it's just, I think it's the videos. Because I save every video, I save every stream on, on my drive, so maybe it's that. Porn. <laughs> uh, where is the asset sales? Sprites, here we go. Okay, so there's a couple of different, yeah, here we go. So you can see, I did I did a couple of sprites. So there's obviously there's Bob who's just taken this is straight port from Rainbow Islands. Uh, then I did the um, umbrella which I drew myself, obviously, uh, and then these which are the uh, what well, you can see down here actually, um, the different animations. Uh, so there's the animation for the sprites on top of the umbrella as well, which is this thing here. I'm just gonna put that into there. 
so you can see when you've gathered more so that's three and two actually there so that, that should be two uh, and that should be three so you can see when you've how many you've gathered then was the the kind of other thing there and then i drew two enemies so i drew the uh the, the main enemy that you you see in the demo i did draw the trumpet as well um i've just not implemented that yet but um they're there and ready to go um i also did um and i will get back to the game in a minute actually i need to draw some graphics so it's kind of fine that we're in this i did do um and this is also stolen from um uh from rainbow islands so this is one thing we're going to need somebody's going to need to kind of draw for me um Uh, is it, uh, it's this one here is all the items in the game that you can pick up um which is quite a lot you can see they take uh actually don't take all of them but they they take most of the the character set up so what the what the game does is it has some reserved characters at the end of the character set and whenever you pick an item up um it it gets removed from the list and and the new, the next item in the list so it maybe saves 20 at a time the next item in the list takes its place so they they're constantly being copied from memory to the new locations um but there's some real problems around getting these to work properly because um because the the items are character based and the uh, elements are character based as well um the the color selections have to be spot on so i really do need somebody um I do need somebody to kind of have a go at um uh, uh, doing these properly so uh oh yeah virtual machine snapshots that will be what it is as well i've got a couple of virtual machines as well so i've got like kali linux and ubuntu and uh centos um actually i've got two centos um and another one as well what's the other one busy box as well <clears throat> but they're not big i mean they're what 32 gig i think maximum um so I think it's the videos. The videos are bloody massive. And while I do go through and convert a lot of them, I do keep some of the original ones. Um, so yeah, CentOS, yeah. I like CentOS. That's what, whenever I do Docker stuff, I always, I always use a CentOS image. It's just the easiest one to use. um i mean I'm, I'm i'm fine i've still got i've still got loads of space in fact it's 24 terabytes but it's not actually 24 terabytes because the drives are less than that so it's actually wow it's showing it's uh, 21 there you go so actually it's only using three terabytes that's not that bad and as i say i think most of that is the video so I definitely recommend those as well. If you've got access to 10 gigabit ethernet, then, um, and you can get a NAS drive, NAS enclosure with 10, to 10 gigabit ethernet. It's freaking amazing. Honestly, it's so good. I've got so much space and it's faster than a mechanical hard drive by a long shot. Um, I definitely recommend it. I save most of my projects on, on there. So all my, all my GitHub stuff, with the exception of the, the, uh, the, the few things I do on stream, um, are all on there. Although dot cosmos is on there as well. So, all right, uh, let's have a go at doing some graphics. So what I want to do is I want to create a set of graphics that will replace the graphics we currently have. Uh, as, I, when I say replace, I don't mean permanently. I mean, as a, as an alternative, uh, character set, um, Oh God, I can't remember which one it is now. It's that one, isn't it? So basically, I want to recreate all of these tiles, uh, with the exception of the pipes. The pipes don't need to change. But these tiles here, I want to create new versions of those. Now, there's a lot of space in here. Um, so I should really just be able to copy most of these things over. So if I keep the top of the platforms the same, which I might not do, I might, might change them, um basically what i'm looking to do is create this a pattern like this that we can reuse so 
um, let's just make this twice the height so I can I can put a kind of alternative version down here. So what I'm looking for is a, is a pattern that I can use. So we've got this pattern here, and this is the pattern that make, creates the basis of our, our, our level design for this one. So this is what I kind of want to create. I want to create something like this. Um, so what I was thinking um, was, and I did start looking at this before, and then for some reason I got distracted. So just to bring up Mayhem in Monsterland again, uh, sweaty land, I think it was. Um, this has a nice kind of um, feel to it, uh, the game, because everything is very much, um... yeah, there we go. Is it going to give me the image or is it going to take me to another page? It's going to take me to another page. And we image a new tab. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but <laughs> so this is, this is another approach. I kind of like this kind of spotty uh, approach on platforms. So just thinking of a way we can do that easily in in, in four kind of things, and it, it's probably as simple as as just drawing um, uh, a spot that maybe kind of covers in the middle or something. I I I, I kind of want to do something like that. Now the idea is is that any level can be replaced with tiles from another level and still look correct. So we have to use the same tile structures as we've got here. Um, we have to use the same kind of number of tiles, the same number of characters, because the idea is being we, we've got up to here, I think, or here um, that we can use. So let's, let's have a think about it. In fact, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go for a quick break. When I go for a break, we'll come back and we'll have a go at doing this. So. Uh, I want to create something that, that still feels quite 3D because this has got kind of a 3D feel to it in that it feels like it doesn't feel that flat. It feels like there's some kind of bumpiness to it. So I want to keep that kind of feel, um, but with a completely different style. So let's have a go at that. All right, so I'm going to go for a quick break, guys. I'll be back in uh, two or three minutes and we'll we'll do some graphics. All right, bear back. Right, I'm back. You know, I'm already getting a hangover, which is fucking terrible. I just need to drink more wine. Oh, thank you for the follow, ASAP Freddy. I missed that one. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stream. If you're still here. Okay, let's have a go. So, um, we've got some blank sprites here so let's let's start by doing one of the background pieces so this is the little background piece we've got here um my my kind of inclination is to just do uh, another shape here as well so so we need a big shape and a little shape um diamond would be too easy um maybe a love heart or something uh Okay, let's uh, let's switch the color around. So let's go for red here. Let's try a love heart. Let's see if I can make a love heart work. Let's make a tile with this value in it as well. So, and of course, the tile editor, as always, is down here, which really irritates me. I don't know why that happens. Okay, so we want to put this here, this here, this here, and this here. Okay, so let's put this tile in place. <laughs> Hopefully it looks love high and doesn't look, let's make it a bit bigger. It doesn't look kind of stupid, which is my fear. Ah, oh, that kind of looks love hearty, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that uh, looks like a love heart. Mm -hmm. 
So that would replace this one. So let's add some extra tiles in here. Let's put it up to 60. Well, oh, that's almost 64. That'll do. So we need a, a small version. Uh, and a small version is just a single blob. Um, not going to be easy to do a love heart in this amount of space, unfortunately. Um, so it's just going to have to be kind of a rough rough shape. Oh, no. That's... that's Oh, that's because... This doesn't look very love-hearty at all on this side. So maybe I need to make it... less... No, nah, see, it doesn't look quite right. Love Hearts is maybe not the right thing to do here. Maybe Monster looks great talking to also. I've been watching YouTube videos. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking, because Cosmin, you don't really, you haven't really played many Commodore games, have you? I would definitely recommend um, playing those two uh, games as good intros. Sam's Journey, definitely. Um, but Sam's Journey is still a commercial game, so you will, you you would have to pay to get that unless you were, uh, find it through more nefarious methods um which i'm sure exist but um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna recommend you go download it download it from these sources <laughs> um yeah commodore format gave it 100 percent controversially um I, I think it's very good my 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 only issue with mayhem in monsterland is that game design wise it it breaks one of the rules of, of game design, which is your first level should be the best level. It should be the most interesting thing um, because you're trying to sell the game, right? So the very first experience you have of the game should last. And unfortunately, the very first level of Mayhem, because of the game design, is, I mean, the, the level itself is fine, but um, because you start in sad mode, it doesn't really give you any of the feeling of mayhem. You have to work. You have to get through the sad level before you get the feeling of the happy level. And it's the happy level, which is what the game is about. Um, and so it kind of misses, it misses that key, key point. Um, but if you can get over that, it is an amazing game. It's very well made, very, very well polished. Um, very good game. I, I would probably have give it, not 100% because of the game design, but I would probably give it... Um, uh, I would give it high 90s, probably 97, 98 or something like that. You only need to play demos if, if only the first level matters. Well, this this is the other thing as well. This is why uh, This is why first levels were always pretty good because when they give demos out, that's what they want to show. Um, but I, I honestly think the first level should be something that you can look at and go, oh, I want to play this more. Um, Turrican's good if you like shooter games. If you like Metroid-style uh, games, then, then Turrican's very good. Um, if you're after a fighting game, you can't go wrong with International Karate. Um, if you're after a platform game, yeah, Sam's Journey. Um is is very good creatures two is is very very good i think creatures one is good um but creatures one is i i find it quite a difficult game i i, I don't think it's um it's it's easy to start but to do to do very good it is quite difficult okay i'm not i'm not pleased with the heart so i'm going to go for a different design here um let's think i, I really don't want to go with a diamond because it's it's too close to this um maybe some other shape so would i just be cheeky and steal the steal the design yeah do you know what? i'm gonna do it anyway so i'm going with um the uh the the musical note design from parasol stars just gonna steal it why not So I think it's uh I think it's a nice design, why not, right? Uh, 
I think the problem is is this this uh, this kind of uh, alternate line thing. It, it's great for simple shapes, but for more complicated shapes, it kind of ruins it a little bit. Um, So it doesn't look like a musical note anymore. It looks like a spade or something. That looks kind of musical note, yeah. Or a ladle, yeah. <laughs> uh. No, so it's definitely, yeah, all right, uh, let's go with that. Let's see if we can make a mini version of that now. So, um, so actually we're not using that character there, so we can, we can quite easily uh, save a character here um, by putting that one there instead, and then, then we can use this to do the small version of it. Uh, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be very tricky. Um, making this look like a note with next to no definition is going to be really difficult. Well, maybe the little one doesn't need to be those. Maybe it could be... Um, Maybe it could just be the the breathe or whatever it's called. Or the rest what's the rest symbol look like now? Uh just remember what it looks like. Oh god, yeah, that's that's quite difficult. Uh God, yeah, that's, that's not that easy to do. Um, oh, there's also the... No, I see that looks wrong as well. Yeah, you, you just can't do it with the... with the shapes that I've got. It's kind of it's hard to, to make this work. Yeah, I, def I definitely need to clear up the chat from that. Uh, I'm going to do that on the next next stream, I think. <laughs> Air that I breathe when I'm a wolf. Lone wolf on the mirror of death. From David Whittaker. Uh, okay, that should be interesting. Um, Air wolf theme. Okay. Uh... Maybe it just needs to. I, I, I like the musical note, but maybe the other thing needs to be a, an abstract shape. Um, I don't know how to make an abstract shape that kind of fits the theme. Uh, I guess that's kind of a mini note, isn't it? All right, that that might do. Let's let's move on to the other bits anyway. I don't know why. I, I mean, I've gone for musical notes just because it it's copied from um, Parasol Stars really more than anything. Okay, so let's think about a shape like uh, a pattern like this. Uh, so let's make a new new thing. Let's drop these in. Okay, so if we would go for, go for dots, we'd want to use the black outline to outline it. So let's start by doing something that might kind of work as a, as a shape outline for that. Um, uh, 
Why is that drawing everywhere up there? Okay, that's because that should actually be... Oh, there we go. And let's just put that in here. Okay, so this is creating a round shape, so that's a good start. Uh, I think maybe the black is a bit too much though. Um, so you see how here we've got thicker black and then thinner black on this side. We could try that. We could try thickening it on one side. So let's try that. That's already thick on that side. So really it's just that, isn't it? If I bring it up that side, no, it's going to look weird if I bring it up that side. Okay, so we have uh, a multicolor which needs to probably be the, the outer borders here, so um, let's fill those in. So that would mean that the insides would be coloured as such, right? And already I'm I'm not I'm not massively pleased with how this is looking. Um, I mean that's just a big blob, right? That doesn't really Yeah, I'm not I'm not pleased with that either. Because if we put a platform on top of that, that actually, mm. I mean, you can maybe kind of add some spotty randomness to it as well. Um, just to make it feel a bit more like I don't know, something. Okay, that one needs to move to there. But then this feels wrong now. I mean, you could dither this with this pattern, but it's it's not looking right at all. I'm not I'm not happy with this. It doesn't doesn't feel it doesn't feel right at all. Um, let's try changing the colours. <laughs> no, don't like it. Don't like it at all. What about if we took the black outline out completely on one side? So it would be like so. So actually, I'd need to restore it over that side. It's on this side. Uh, I mean, it's a little better, but no, I like it. Okay. I'm going to try something different. So what I'm going to go for instead is a as a checkerboard kind of approach to things. So if I do this, 
and I do this on every character here, I'm going to get this checkerboard pattern. <clears throat> now, obviously, edges will will fill this in. So the the fact that it it doesn't fill in quite right is is absolutely fine. But then if I if I fill it in with a char color and then do so which way is the light coming here so the light's coming from the top so if i do something like that okay that's feeling a little bit better and if i put the dark color in here so it fills out okay it's all just experimentation at the moment, just to see how it how it looks. Okay, so at the edges it needs to change, but that's fine. Um, maybe that actually needs to be fully black, like so. I mean, it just needs to be completely squared off. Okay, now what happens if I just reverse the colors in one of these? So if I um, if I do this, oops, actually I I can do better than that. I could well I can reverse the colors. Let's reverse the colors and see what that looks like. Just so it's a bit of randomness, but I can also change the charcoal on some of these. So if I change the charcoal to some random colors. That's looking more interesting. Um, I think the color choices are probably wrong here. Um, but it's looking more interesting. So I think the other thing I'd like to do is maybe make some of them thicker than others, like so. Not that one, though. Let's do it on. Not that one, that one, so. Okay, that looks kind of interesting. I'm going to take out. See, it's, it's taking those bits out that look weird. Actually, I kind of like this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a what I I don't know what you'd call this. I guess I call it a variation uh, tile, which is basically the same tile but with one thing slightly changed in it. Um, and it just allows you to have a little bit of variation over the over the tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this red tile. Actually, this is this is kind of copying what I did in uh, Dot Cosmos. So I'm going to take this red tile. Uh, I'm going to put that here, like so, uh, and then I'm just going to put a dot in it here so I know which one it is. And then we're just going to uh, randomly change that in a few places, so like here, here, here. Uh, and then what I can do is I can mess around with things a little bit. So it's always blue above it, so let's just do that maybe. No, it's not working either. It's not working, is it? Damn it. Actually, let me do it on the green instead. So let me put that back. And let's copy that one here. Put that here instead. Because on this one, the character above it is actually blue. So Put 
Werewolf. You see, this just adds a slight bit of variation in it. Uh, unfortunately, it's purple underneath it, so I can't really do much about that. What about if I add the transparent? No, it's, it's weird. Damn, this is hard. This is why I don't do graphics, right? This is this is exactly why I don't do graphics because I can't. Keep the round of us in. Don't like that either. Maybe if I change this one, like so, and that's always above a purple. So if I put purple as the color, do that there. Uh, no, don't like it. <clears throat> Why has I got two lines of black in? That should just be one. Uh, bit of myth. Do you like this tune? So what about if we go the other way? So instead of instead of doing this weird pattern, we just fill them with the colours that we're on. So let's try filling it with this colour and then add in oops. So And that would be the same across all of them. Oh. But now different colours. <laughs> okay, but now the pattern looks very similar. So what we could do is on this alternate tile here, um, we could just switch it up a bit uh, and have colours in weird places. So occasionally you just get a bit of various. That looks all right, actually. That's not too bad. <clears throat> I think the problem is, is the black looks far too strong, but we kind of need the black. Though. That's the problem. Don't need that one there. So let's try changing some colors around in here. So let's have a look if we change the background. So this was the background of the other level, blue. That kind of looks all right still. Uh, I think we said purple was a potential. Yeah, that looks all right. Orange is a potential. Was red a potential? I think red was as well at some point. Okay, that's not looking too bad. And changing the multicolor just changes the highlights on these which is fine. Um, what have we got at the moment? Let's have a look at what colour scheme we've got at the moment. Hey Steps, welcome back. Okay, so the colour scheme is, uh, oops. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so we need green pipes here. So let's set, set the pipes to green. Oh, pardon me. Okay, I I think we can maybe make this work. I think this this is this is usable. So we do have a slight difference here in that um, we have two different variants of of this pattern, um, which is not. Actually, oh, there are some slight differences. Um, <clears throat> this is fine. It doesn't matter if there's two, if there's a little variance, as long as you can build the same, same things. So what I'm going to try and do is build this same level um, using this pattern. Um, oh, have I missed? I think I missed that one there. It should have been green as well. There we go. So we're going to use this pattern instead to build it. So the other thing we're going to need to do is the edges as well. So let's just take these uh, these two patterns as our as our edges. Um, so that would mean a purple there and a green here. Uh, let's put this down this side. There we go. Right, uh, and then on this side it would be a blue and a red. Okay, so blue red down this side so all we need to do is we need to build some pieces that fit over here uh rtx voice does redeem mac muffin joke what did the compass say to the traveler boy have i got the oh. that's absolutely terrible <laughs> but it made me laugh, so so job done. I hope you didn't win the giveaway. No, I'm not calling it. Ah, oh, I'd I missed the opportunity. I should have said yes, you won it, but but you didn't appear for five minutes. Uh, RTX voice does work incredibly well, but it just massacres my voice tone. I guess gamers don't care about fidelity. Um, that's interesting. It it shouldn't massacre your voice tone. Um, it's interesting. Um, yeah, you have a radio voice with it. Oh, okay. It depends what other stuff you've got going on. So one thing I've noticed is that the more noise you have in the room, the more it does kind of affect the voice. Um, because obviously, I mean, it's got to it's got to affect something, right? Let's see how well the bot does. What do you get when you cross a rabbit with a water hose? <laughs> It's not terrible. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. Okay, so let's copy that over. So this is going to be on this side here. So all we need to do now is just kind of have a slightly random edge to this. Uh, uh, which should probably just be enough with that, I think. Uh, maybe... Uh, and then this one would be which color? This this would be uh, green. Okay. And this obviously needs to start there somewhere. Okay, now I think that needs to be there, like so. I 
actually maybe that needs to go down a little bit more. I think maybe it's too. Because uh, it looks a bit weird here now. But now it looks too straight down that edge, I think. So it needs a bit of indenting on this side. Where I indent it there, no, there, I think. Well, maybe it just needs to be straight. Maybe I'm maybe I'm trying too hard to create a funky edge. Maybe it should just be like that, down one side. Um, which means I probably do need to put a little dot on the top of these, like so. Maybe that on the edges. There we go. Oh, that looks all right. Uh, what are you doing now with the game? I was away. So we're just trying to make some uh, additional level graphics at the moment. Um, just trying to come up with some uh, patterns that work, really. Uh, it's actually... Uh, this is why I don't do graphics. I find it incredibly difficult to do uh, graphics with any kind of skill. Um, I'm relying on, well, I don't know what I'm relying on. I, I'm just kind of giving it a try and seeing if it works. Um, it doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like it, it rounds around the edges, um, which is kind of interesting. Maybe if I curve them inside like this, it'll add a bit of variation. So if I do this with the red one as well, on those sides. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what you've selected there, Proud 7, but I bet it's not what you want. Because <laughs> that guy, as far as I know, didn't do any Turrican music. Not for the actual game, anyway. Uh, I think that's maybe all right. I think I'm just going to... I'm going to take that dot off there. No. That one there. So on the red side. Yeah, and I kind of like the 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 angledness of these. I like I like the fact they're like odd shaped. So I'm gonna do the same on the blue. Yeah, like that. So that means if I do that on here as well. Yeah, this this actually feels all right now. Doesn't feel completely broken there. Uh, so green would be purple would be at the top, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Let's get the colours right now. I think the colours might look better with different uh, shades in here, like yellow. Uh, green. Oh, let's get rid of the red. Maybe the red can be a cyan. No, no, red's probably all right. What colour doesn't stand out properly there? I kind of want to change the platform for this one. Um, so we've got we've got the the colour and the variations as well. Uh, which actually, it seems to only have the variations in place.
Oh no, hang on. So, one, two, so it's just the middle section here. So actually, it doesn't need that variation anymore. I think it looks all right without it. So it's just going to get rid of that. Yeah, it looks like sweets, doesn't it? It looks like a, a pile of kind of, what are they called? Um, Tutti Fruities or something. It's colourful. It's interesting. It still feels a little bit 3D. Uh Let's try and change the top part as well. So let's try and make these. So at the moment we've got this here. Uh, actually, let's try and switch those around if I can. Oh my God, how can I, can I not switch them anymore? You used to be able to switch these. Okay, I can't, fair enough. Let's try a different color background. Yeah, that looks all right. I'm quite pleased with that, actually. Uh, yeah, all right, let's go with that. So in that case, we I'm going to try making a new platform here. So I'm going to copy the existing platform pattern. Um, uh, and I'm going to do the same here as well. So I'm going to make uh, a platform based on these pieces. Um, and let's see what we can do to make platforms stand out a little bit more um, and look different. <clears throat> so obviously the platform needs to be white. We can't get around that. Um, but what we might be able to do is make this, it just needs to feel a little bit different. So. So the last one had this wave in it, so we could get rid of the wave um, and flatten it out a little bit. Actually, this is this is a decent version of it. Um, so actually, if I, if I do this, But that's going to create an odd, odd shape on one side. Which I can kind of counter by doing that, I guess. But then it looks flat now. That's not going to work. Uh -huh. It's all very, very tricky getting this right. It's it's not it's not what I'm good at at all. So the multicolor can be the multicolor is not going to change very much in the level in this in this case. It's just going to change the color of the highlight. Um, so you almost kind of really don't care about the color choices on this level, except for the background. Um, in which case, we can probably just use it to add highlights to these. So 
Uh, um, or actually, maybe we can use it to to shade it a little bit. Um, Okay, that's looking more interesting now. Um, maybe we get rid of the bottom bit completely and go with only the top parts here. Um, because it's going to kind of look like that. Now that seems too much, so let's reduce that down even more, uh, like so. Actually, I kind of like that gap. A gap there, though, still. That would be that looks all right, and it's still colorable. Okay, that's... I need a technical artist. Fuck off, Cosmic. <laughs> Can you imagine giving one of our artists this? They wouldn't have a clue what to fucking do. 16 colours? My God. So, and I really don't care because it's my last fucking week, so I'm going to say it. So we we have a group of artists at work who call themselves technical artists. Um, so as a technical artist, I don't know if anybody knows the term technical artist and what it entails, but it does entail knowing a little bit about uh, image formats and compression and things like that. So... They couldn't understand why reducing the palette uh, to 256 colors for an image uh, produced worse quality images uh, than compressing something with JPEG. And they just couldn't understand it. It's like, you've only got 256 colors in your image. Of course, it's going to look worse. Idiots. Yeah, it is a rant incoming. <laughs> it's one of the main, main problems I have at the moment. It's just so fucking ridiculous. They actually thought, and this was the words from the technical artist lead, they actually thought that reducing the palette, because it was a PNG, and they had a 32-bit PNG, and they thought that if they reduced the palette down to 256, because it was PNG, it was still a lossless compression. They were compressing it, and it was lossless. And it's like, you're reducing the colors to 256. How can it be lossless? You've lost all the colors. It's just, it's not lossless. Get over yourselves. So like, oh, we don't use JPEG because PNG is lossless. Yes, but you're reducing the colors to 256. It's lossless. And this was the technical artist lead. So, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> One of, one of the, the, I mean, it's not the only reason, but it's definitely one of the reasons why I'm, uh, I'm changing jobs. Yes, I'm changing jobs, CB Meeks. I'm changing to um, uh, uh, InfoSec, Information Security. Yeah. No, it is. It's extremely painful. Um, uh, it's just, it's the repetition as well. Having to repeat the same things over and over again to the same people is is just frustrating uh and i actually got some quite snarky uh emails from them when i when i called them out on on their lack lack of knowledge well no i didn't even i didn't even call them out on a lack of knowledge i just i just pointed out that their their work was not up to the standards that we we expect um <clears throat> um because i had a direct comparison i had figures i could directly compare them to uh, another team which did everything perfectly fine and they 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 got really arsy about it so i said like, oh fuck it i can't be dealing with this precious precious little things they are 
I have a lot of respect for artists that know their stuff, but when an artist doesn't know their, doesn't even know the basics of, um, of things like, you know, image compression and palettes and the difference between 32 bit true color and 8 bit palletized PNG, they don't know the difference. They just think, oh, it's smaller, it's better. Um, then they, you know, come on. Okay, this is this is looking quite nice actually. I kind of like the the style of this. Critique to a person who's aware of incompetence and kind of drunk. He's drunk. Yeah, he already hates himself. So, it, do you know what? I wouldn't mind if they. So they just used to be called artists. They just used to be called art workers. Um, but what really got my goat up about it, and this is the one of the reasons I got so kind of angry about it and uh, and kicked up a bit of a fuss about it, is because. They suddenly decided to call themselves technical artists and not knowing anything about what a technical artist actually should be doing. Uh, and that that really got my goat up. And I just couldn't believe that they had the gall to call themselves that when they really were not doing the job of a technical artist at all. OK, um, <laughs> that aside, uh, I want to do the bottom pieces. So we've we've got these pieces here. Uh, which are basically the the base of the the thing. So um, I'm going to create that now. So let's uh, let's just go with the base piece in the middle first. So we're going to do this whole row here. So this is the piece in the middle, um, which is going to be like so so all i really need to do here now is is close off the bottom um which i'm going to do like so um kind of looks all right i think so you imagine that all the way across kind of looks okay for a base maybe maybe just vary it ever so slightly and get rid of that one Actually, it needs it on both. I think. Yeah, I, I just find I just find it really irritating. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of people that um that give themselves titles they don't deserve, especially when there's people that deserve titles and don't get it. Um. But yeah, the 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 technical artist thing is just a fucking joke, to be honest. It really, really angered me. Hence why Cosmo has mentioned that. So for those who don't know, Cosmo works with me. That's why he's. He's brought up the uh, technical artist thing because he knows it's a sore point for me. So thanks for that, Cosmin. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, let's just. Can I insert one there? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So let's do the same again. So we want the red and green on the bottom, uh, and we want the purple here, but we want a new one here, uh, and this is the yellow one. Uh, but the yellow, oh no, it's not a new one. It's just the yellow edge piece. Okay, so it's that there like that. Uh, and it's a red edge piece here instead, like so. But then this red edge piece needs to be brought in a bit. So this goes here like that. Um, There you go, that looks kind of looks all right. I think maybe that needs to be. No, 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 it's fine with that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm a technical, technical programmer, but that's fine. I think programmers are technical. I think to be a programmer, you have to kind of know how at least some systems work. Um, the problem I had with the, the technical artists is they didn't know the basics. I mean, the sort of stuff that um, you would expect a year one um, web, de well, in fact, a, a day one web, web development um, student to know. They didn't know that. And that's the thing that really upset me. It was like, why on earth are you allowed to call yourself this when you, you really don't know what the hell you're on about? Uh, okay, green. So this is this piece. And this needs to be brought in a little bit as well. Uh, 
I mean, I am I am kind of easily angered by these things, and that's that's fine. I I'm not expecting to uh, to be happy with everything I do in life, but <laughs> this just really kind of got my goat up quite a lot. So uh, yeah, that'll do. Actually, it kind of makes me want to bring the red in on that side now. Um, I think I was fine that way. No, actually, it kind of looks better with the... Yep, yeah, that'll do. That looks good. So now we've got a bottom edge, we've got the middle, we've got the sides. So, having a look at this, we've got... Um, what is this piece here? So this is... This is a side, this is a side with the next, oh no, this is a bottom side. This is a bottom, that's a bottom. Okay, so what's this bit? This is a side. Why is that different to that piece? It has extra shadow on it or something. Oh, this is, this is the very top piece. Okay, that doesn't need to be in there in this one. Um, it's kind of is all right. Actually, that's the point. If I if I put an extra shadow in here like that, does it make it look more? No, it doesn't. Okay, I was kind of wondering if it would make it look a bit different, but it doesn't. Actually, I kind of like that though. It rounds it. It makes it look less rounded, uh, less uh, square, a bit more rounded. I think in the bottom corner of the red as well, maybe. Yeah, that's that's looking all right. So, uh, wow! As soon as the race comes up, it's like crazy how many people bet and uh, that's the usual thing with pros. We hate inefficiency. I I just hate the audacity of somebody to to claim something that they're absolutely not. Um, I I guarantee if you gave some kind of technical artist test to our technical artists, they'd all fail. And annoyingly, most of the coders I know would pass. That's what I find really upsetting about it. It's the fact that they 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 can call themselves this. They even they even got congratulated um, in a company kind of company wide meeting. They even got congratulated for doing a great job, and they'd done a shit job. Oh, it fucking angers me. I see. I kind of want to make this. I kind of want to make one of these. No, nah. no. I kind of. I kind of like the kind of symmetrical nature of this. It's. It's kind of looks all right. I think. Okay. Um, which means really, let's try building the level now. So, and see what we need. Okay. So first of all, let's just copy this this entire map from here, uh, to here, and let's have a go at replacing it. So let's start by replacing all of these. Right, the pipes are going to stay the same, obviously. Um, so let's have a look at platforms. Okay, so I need to put the grid on here so I can see. Okay, so this is a platform with an edge on it. So that's these pieces here. Um, so let's go ahead and make these. So, uh, so we've made most of these. We've not made the bottom pieces here, so we need to make those bottom pieces. So the bottom pieces are, are essentially this bit. Um, but without the top half, so that would be, um, let's move this down here. That would be like this. Um, no, sorry, that would be like this. There we go. And then on this side here, it would be it would be this like that and then on this side it's going to be just the red 
and then the green bit on that side. Right, there we go. So we've got this, we've got this bottom section here. The top section we've got, um, we don't need this shadowed piece. We've got the bottom pieces and the side pieces and the middle piece. Uh, so we need this bit here, which is a single platform um, with this underneath. So um, that is going to be, okay, so that is basically um, this and this and then the bottom pieces here. So this is that there and that there. And then on this one, it's going to be just the middle section with a red and green on it. And then on this one, it's going to be the top section uh, with red and the edge green here. So there we go. We've got we've got single platforms here, um, which are all going to look red and green, which is. Oh, my God, Mario Land. This is the one from um, from Game Boy, isn't it? Yeah. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. Um, when I come back, we'll we'll finish off this. We'll try and get a level built with this uh, with this set of tiles, and then this gives us two sets of tiles that we can then use on the level editor. So the level editor will let you change some colors around uh it's unfortunately it's not going to let you change these colors uh, but it'll let you change the multicolor uh and the transparent color um but it will give us it will give us some extra kind of versions of levels which is nice and we need to do probably one more set of graphics like this um at least pre preferably two maybe um but we shall see all right um i'll be back in a few minutes guys just get on the right pages. All right, bear it back. All right, I'm back. Any big winners? No, let's have a look. Oh, Turrican won. A few big winners in there. Mr. G with the biggest, 60,000. Must be doing quite well on the points now. It's a couple of big wins you've had there. He's going to win this one. Oh! Oh! Two wins in a row. My God. Another big win for Mr. G. Let's do another raffle. <clears throat> so I'm going to play uh, Parasol Stars in about half an hour. I just want to get this, uh, this extra kind of level uh, graphics sorted. Uh, and then we can, we can move on to uh, looking at a, uh, uh, playing uh parasol stars a little bit i think we need some variation in these in these tiles as well because the, the tile colors kind of it, it doesn't look good down there it needs a bit more color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another tile um uh with these colors changed a little bit so i'm just gonna kind of what are the colors on the bottom half so yellow and purple so i'm going to do a yellow one actually no i'm going to switch them around a bit um like so and then that means we can have a variation of this tile um which we can put some different colors in um so there is going to be a little bit of a change between them but basically the editor is going to be supplied with a tile map like this and you'll basically just drop the uh the tiles in where you want them um So there, there will be a little bit of variation. So I'm going to add another variation of this one as well. Um, actually, I'm, I'm just going to do this by uh, inserting. I'm just going to add two versions of it. 
So the more of these that I do, obviously the less um the less space there's gonna be for other other character sets, but it's we're not using that much, so I don't think it's gonna be a, a huge problem. Um So you can have purple on that side. So you can alternate between colours if you want to to kind of make the levels look a little bit more interesting. Which is the kind of aim with this. So this would be purple here, and this would be a yellow version of is it that one? Yes. So I could put that there. So for instance, you know, it looks it looks a bit oh no, it's not that one, is it? Actually, that looks weird. Why does that one look weird? Oh, because it's that one I'm supposed to do, that's why. There we go. So now that platform looks a little bit more interesting. Um, so that's this section sorted. Um, this, I think, why why is that different from that? Oh, because that's a bottom and that's not a bottom. Okay, so not a bottom needs to basically stay the same as... Where's the other side of that? Is that that piece there? Okay, right. So, so this is just platform with a, an edge that goes down. So let's make this edge. Uh, where's the pattern here? So it needs to be red, green. So we want a red edge, red edge, and then a green solid piece, but not that one. That one. And then not that red edge, but that red edge. There we go. <clears throat> so that's, for instance, this piece here is is like that. Um, so this would be the same, but with just red and green here, which I don't think is being used anywhere here at the moment. Oh yeah, is it's been used here like so? <clears throat> uh, so the same here, so the red here, and then the green edge, that's that piece there, uh, so that would be this, like so. And that's also this here. That's good. No other places where that was used. That's good. Okay. Okay, looking good. Um, so now let's add a few more tiles in. The number of tiles really doesn't matter here at all. So um I think as long as I oh I think as long as I keep it uh Oh, what the hell? Why is that not let me type a number in there? Oh, what is going on there? I don't like that at all. Ah, uh, okay. It's a bit weird. Let's type somewhere else and come back to here. Uh, okay. I can't seem to add extra tiles in here, so I'm just going to use insert instead. It's a bit strange. I don't know why it was doing that. Okay, so now we need this this piece here. So this this bottom piece. Uh, actually, we do have that here. So that should go here. Let's add this color variation in as well. So let's take this block and do um, do a, a, an alternate color variation of it here. So that would be uh, purple yellow like so so i could use that there uh, and then a purple yellow in the middle but with bottom pieces which i can use there and then this would be an edge piece which isn't being used anywhere at the moment but um let's, let's bake it anyway so it's, it's there for people to use so edge piece yellow on the edge there we go so you could use that there if you wanted to but for for the sake of this looking kind of quite colourful, 
I think we need to do, uh, oh, we've got colored variations of this one anyway. Oh, that's a bottom variation. I'm just going to vary the middle piece here. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't matter because this is the number, as I say, the number of tiles doesn't matter uh, as long as it stays under 256, which should be fine. So I'm going to do a variation of, uh, which piece is it now? This piece here, uh, but with yellow instead. So but purple and yellow. So that's a, a purple, um, hang on, what's going on there? So that's a, it's a purple edge piece, which is that one. Uh, and then a yellow solid piece in the middle. There we go. Just going to drop this down onto the next line so I can see it. There we go. Uh, let's keep up with the chat a little bit. It's really, yeah, I am going to, I'm going to mess around with the, um, I'm going to mess around with the chat a little bit and, and make sure that it isn't spamming too much. Um, I'm going to probably do what Chiz is doing and just kind of keep the, uh, keep the chat as free as possible. Oops. So if I just drop that into alternate places like so. So that means I would need a different one on that edge. So I kind of, no, I don't have it actually. It would be this next one. Okay. So that would be solid purple and then edge yellow. Oh, why is it yellow on that side? Where's that yellow being used? That can't possibly be, oh, it's used there. Oh, that's wrong. That should be purple yellow. So that should actually be uh, yellow there. Yeah, I've got this the wrong way around, haven't I? No. Oh, yeah, I've got this completely back to front. Okay, so, so that should actually be yellow. That should actually be purple. which means that should actually be purple, red, green, yellow, green, yeah, which means that's wrong. So that needs to be purple, needs to be yellow, there we go. Yeah, that's better. Which means that there would now be yellow edge piece, like so, which means I can drop that in there, cool. Uh, Okay, this is looking kind of all right. So uh, we've got another platform here, uh, which I can alternate like so. That's good. Alternate these a little bit as well to make this varied. Um, So we're getting there. We've almost got all of the all of the colours in. Um, I would maybe like to do a variation. Uh, do I need a variation on this piece? It feels like I do. It feels a little bit a little bit wrong. So I'm going to do yet another variation of this. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch these colors over. So the thing I just fixed, I'm now going to actually put back. Um, actually, this should probably be in this one. So let's make it nice and neat. And this would just be edge pieces on this side. So this would be a yellow edge which we don't have, so I'm going to copy that one, make it yellow, and then I'm going to copy what is it, red, so it's that one, copy that, I'm going to make that green. Which means I can alternate these a little bit. 
if I need to. I don't really need to do it here, but I do need to do it on this side because it looks a little bit too uh, samey on this side. So uh, the idea is is to kind of try and make it look a little best, uh, a little less kind of samey. Um, so I'm using a lot of characters to do this, a lot more than the original design, but um, it should be fine, I think. Oh, this is creatures. Oh, this is the high score tune, I think. Uh, so I do need a red edge on this. So let's go for this one. Make that red. And then what's the other color? Green. So that's correct. And make that purple. So that means now I can kind of do this and just kind of vary the colors down that side a little bit. And it looks a little bit more interesting than you see. Um, so I've only got a couple of couple of things I need to do here. Uh, one is this, which I think is kind of straightforward. Um, so let's let's do the switch thing now. So uh, so this is. Is this a switch with a bottom? No, it's not. Okay, this is a switch. Hang on, how's that even working? Oh, uh, okay. Don't know where that comes from, but I think we've got enough here to be able to make this this work. So let's uh let's let's get the switch bit in. So um okay, so switch looks like so on the edges. um with solid underneath so i'm actually going to deliberately make this two different colors without um without thinking about um giving an alternate oh actually that looks like it's down it should be up there we go uh, wrong button uh that one which means on this next one, that's going to be this and this, and we'll go for the red green approach here. So red green with the bottom is these ones here. Oh, wrong one. Like so, which means we've just got two edges here, and I think the edges we've already kind of got. So let's grab a, a uh, that one there, and then the yellow purple on that side there we go so that kind of looks cool so really all we're missing here now is these weird kind of pieces in the middle um on these corners so let's do one on each side so uh let's go let's go for the normal pattern so it, the normal pattern is purple yellow red green Purple, yellow, red, green. Yeah, that will work. Okay, so and this is this is solid. So purple, yellow, red, green, and that goes here. But now I just need to change that piece there for this, like so. Let's turn the grid off. There we go. So the same over here. So it'd be purple, yellow, red, green, which works okay as well. Okay, so purple yellow red green with that on that side no sorry wrong one uh that one <laughs> there we go we have a level built with a slightly different character set now um and it kind of looks all right i think so before i continue i'm going to save this Uh, I also need to turn the materials on and make sure that we've got the materials right. So we need threes on all the colorable sections, which we don't have at the moment. Oh, actually we do. It's, it's actually copied them in. Yeah, it has copied the colorable. So we just need ones on the solid bits. So uh, one, 
Warm. Warm. Actually, I can do this in a block like so. Oh my god, what is this? This sounds weird. What's missing here? So they're all on ones. They should all be ones as well. And that should be a one. Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. So I think we've got, I think we've got enough to build levels now with two different sets of characters, uh, and they don't look too bad actually. I'm quite pleased with those. Um, okay, there's some weirdities around here. Uh, so what do we do here? Actually, we don't do anything around here. Uh, so if you look around here, the, the edges, we don't actually do anything around those. So that's kind of fine. I mean, I'm not 100% pleased with it, but it will do. Um, and actually that looks kind of, oh, I need to sort the tops out here. So these tops aren't sorted out, um, which is this piece here. So that there that there let's just give it a different color so let's go for like a red background uh, let's make the the note uh Purple kind of looks all right there. Ah, uh, no, we can't have a red background because one of the players is red. So it's red and cyan are the two colors we can't have. So we can have orange. Uh, we can have green. No, we can have green if we change the color of the pipes. Uh, we can have blue. Uh, or is the charcoal we've been changing in that case? Blue looks really good there, I've got to say. Mm. Pink is fine as well. We we can have pink. Um, and actually, uh, that looks all right, actually. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. Now, what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to export the character set. Oh my god. Uh, I'm going to guess it's Charles. It can't be much else, right? I'm going to export the uh, character set attributes, which is calls. I'm going to export the tiles, which I know is going to just be tiles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save out map two, um, which I'm going to do uh, by actually just copying this to here, reducing it to eleven. Ah, oh, great! It doesn't want to let me. Doesn't want to let me do that. Okay, uh, let me let me save that and reopen because I'm. Not, I think there's a bug there. And we'll get this working in the game, uh, and then we'll we'll load up the parasol stars on the uh, PC engine. Right. So let's grab that. I'm quite pleased with that. I think that that kind of still looks candy esque. Uh, which is what I wanted. Oh my god, it's still not letting me... It's not letting me type in there for some weird reason. Um, oh shit, I don't know what to do now. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, thank you for the resub, Wizard NJ. 
I'm going to save it to the old format. Uh, There's obviously a bug in there. I might need to update it. I haven't updated it for a while. So, in fact, I had the pre release version of this. Uh... Oh, it's somebody's. <laughs> I was looking for the bits, bits alert. Somebody's actually just playing Turbo Outrun. Uh -huh. Okay, right. Hopefully, this works. This doesn't work, then there's obviously something weird going on, and I'm, I'm at no. Uh, oops, there we go. There we go. It works on there. That's strange. So export map. So we're going to export this to map two, and then if we go into the game and just change. Uh, the map in here, just to say map two. Hopefully, we should get that. Uh, the colors are going to be wrong, um, but we can look at that. Uh, that's going to have to be part of the the enemy data anyway. So, so we're going to get a blue background. We're going to probably get uh, purple highlights. I think maybe. I'll try and change it anyway. Yeah, so we've got purple highlights. So that's fine. Um, we'll we'll change the background color now. Um, it kind of looks a bit strange, but it's it's all right actually. I kind of it's it's okay. We might need to do some tweaks on it. I think maybe the purple highlights look a bit weird. That's that's the biggest problem here. So um, let's have a look where the colors are set. They're probably set in here weirdly. Uh, So it's going to be D02, yeah, it's going to be this one here. So this is set in the, uh, the multicolor to zero, which is one. So we want D022, um, which I'm not seeing anywhere. Let's just have a look, D022. Uh, okay, it's set here to 05, which is green, um, which I don't think it is, so. Well, that does seem to be the only place where it's affected. Initialize transition green. Uh, okay, let's let's try setting that to that. See what happens. No, see, I was completely wrong. Um, so somewhere there is a purple setting for D zero two two. Where it is, good question. Um, I would have thought it would have been in this style, but apparently not. Uh, my colors. Okay. Check in here, it might be in here. Well, why? The, I don't know why it's not found it with D022. Maybe. Maybe I've actually called it extended background color one. Ah, here we go. Okay, start. So it is in start. So these are our colors. Um, uh, still aim for a Christmas release. Yeah, if we can get it, get it done. I think if we get the level editor in place, that's a huge leap. Um, so at the beginning of September, um, I want to start dealing with the the kind of game flow i want to get the rest of the game flow stuff done so i want to make sure that you can go from title screen into the game complete a level get the proper bonus go into the next level lose lives game over so that's going to be september's job is getting that all working i don't think that will take that long actually um at the same time we'll try and add some levels in as well then october i want to deal with the the intro screen um so getting all the the kind of the, the flow of the intro scheme right including things like high score and stuff like that so that will be october's job um and then polish really so it might be it might be released digitally by christmas i think maybe the the uh physical version might take a little bit longer but um we can certainly aim for it anyway 
okay, where the hell is the background color coming from? Because it's not coming from there. So, but yeah, I would I would definitely like to try and get this done for Christmas. Uh, but I understand if we if we can't, that's that's fine. I'm I'm not expecting absolutely to be able to get this done, but um, it would be good if we could. Let's have a look at that. So go. Oh no, pink is not good because the character's face is pink. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, what looks good? Oh, it's a shame because pink actually looks quite nice in here. Um, yellow, possibly. Um, let's see. Yeah, yellow's not too bad. I kind of like the brightness of the yellow. But it's going to need these to be something slightly different, um, which is not going to be an easy thing to change. Cyan, red, white, uh, green, blue. Actually, green, cyan actually isn't too bad. So let's go with cyan. File, export. Export character set attributes, calls. Go. And let's change the get rid of that. Okay, so let's change the background color to that, which does mean ah the this might not work with the transition though. So well, actually maybe maybe it will still be all right. Um, so let's have a look for D zero two one. Uh, let's see where that's been set. So we are setting it here, which is part of the bonus animation. Initialize transition. Here we go. Yeah, so this is going to have to be drawn from the um, from the level data as well. So, <laughs> this chat is creating a socialist community. Oh no, it's a bit bright, isn't it? That. That's a bit too too much in your face that um let's, let's zoom in on this a little I kind of why can't I zoom in on that now? What the hell? Fine, do that. Okay. Alright, let's go with the orange colour, which means we should probably go with uh character set. Probably red for these actually. Yeah, red, okay. <sighs> so orange is eight, uh, which means we also need to change that in, that's fine. Uh, what was it, ah, okay, here we go. Although that wasn't everything, was it? That's just the bonus. It's got to be another another place where that's being used because title card. That's fine. Ah, here we go. This this piece here. Uh, yes, let's go with that. I need to pull these out and turn them into uh, level based parameters at some point. I'm kind of glad yellow doesn't work because it means that the transition stays unique. Yeah, that looks all right. What I really like about this is if we've not used... Ah, there you go. There's, here's a problem with this thing. We've not used uh, black yet. So uh, we might need to do some, some bouncing off the, the bottom here because uh, that... that thing is is not in a good place there at all um okay so that's something i need to I probably need to do at some point um but those they, those graphics look nice it's it's a simple oh we've still got the wrong color in here though let's get that color fixed so that should be 
I would have thought that would have been in the start routine. Where was it? Here. But it doesn't seem to have, have picked that up. So let me see if that's set anywhere else. Um, doesn't look like it is doing. Oh, here we go. Purple. Set in the IRQ. Of course it is. Uh, there we go. So make that light grey. It should be fine. Is it worth trying the player screen shake or don't want to? Um, not in this time. It's, it's, it's already... Well, actually, let's give it a try. I'll go for a quick break after I give it a try and then we'll, we'll play some Parasol Stars. So, yeah, we'll give it a try. That looks better. That actually looks quite nice. I kind of like that. And it still seems candy-ish, so. What day is the next charity stream? I'm not sure. I'm considering doing it um, during my time off. Um, so I need to, I need to, I need to work out who, whoever wants to do graphics for this. I know, you, I know you actually um, approached me about that. So um, if you want to do graphics for that, then um, I, I will speak to and anybody who's interested in graphics for an Arkanoid style game. If you contact me, um, I know Warlock has already done that actually, so um, I will closer to the time I will I'll get in contact with you guys and and kind of give you an idea of what I want. I want it to look very similar to Arkanoid, so um, it's almost I want to make an Arkanoid three um, in a way, um, but I've got to be careful because I'm trying to do it in like a twenty four hour well not twenty four hour stream but like a twelve. Uh, 12 to 16 hour stream so depending on what i need um but yeah we will need something great job for a non-technical artist yeah yeah i think they look all right actually don't you i think they they look pretty good i think the ones on this side need to be less um less symmetrical they're a bit too ordered on this side so i might need to tweak these a little bit on this side but um i think generally they look all right um and it gives you gives you a different graphic style to use on the levels. So, um, how's the secondoid going? Uh, it's not going anywhere at the moment. So the only thing I've done is the um, um, the only thing I've done is the uh, particle system for it. What about liquid source source black and colored stripes? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so we probably want to do one more set of graphics for this. Um, I mean, there's definitely room for it. Um, in fact, there's probably room for another two, actually, in here, I'd say. Um, so we'll probably do a little bit more on the next stream, probably do another one. I'll try and get some ideas together uh, and try and do some stuff for it. Um, we might also add, some, so we did have some background lollipops and stuff. Um, I might create some kind of basic shapes that fit into the background as well here because um, there's no reason not to, to have those stuff back in. So maybe I'll reinstate the the lollipop stuff um, just so there's a bit of extra kind of fluff that we can stick around the levels. Um, anything to kind of fill it out a little bit more. Um, the reason we took them out was because of the, um, because of the uh, player's throw routine, basically, was... Uh, was kind of destroying colors behind it but we can probably reinstate those now same with clouds as well we could probably build some clouds back in so th there's a bit of room to do some stuff so we'll do uh we'll do a bit more graphics on the next stream i'm going to try and put this shake thing in now so um uh do i want to quit this i'm going to save this as penny map three because i think i need the original actually it doesn't really matter so i'll save it as three anyway okay and let's have a go at doing this player shake. So uh, the screen shake, sorry. So the player, um, when he lands, causes a screen shake. So let's just look for the word shake in here. Just for screen shake. Uh, this is it's going to be on a fall, isn't it? So um, I'm looking for jump and fall, um, which is not here. I think it's just called jump, jump and fall. There we go. Um, and then in here somewhere, 
here we go. Store IRQ screen. Oh, it's as simple as that, I think. So I think if we do play a death, uh, so copy that and then have a look for death uh, or die uh, or kill. Kill player, here we go. Let's just try that. That could be enough. I hope that is, because that was a super easy fix. Oh, let's actually use the player I'm used to using. I don't know why I'm suddenly starting to use player two. Oh no, that didn't, did it? That I did it on the re on the respawn. Okay, so that's not the place to do it. But it's the right idea, it's just in the wrong place. So get collisions, uh kill player, okay. So full check. We only really want it if we collide with an enemy. We don't want it if we fall off the screen. So maybe it's in enemies. Uh enemies, enemies, here we go. So let's have a look. We've got uh check player collision. Here we go. Uh player. Player has hit the enemy. We fit a power up. More. Initiate a jump for the death animation. Here we go. So I think if we just do that, now if we hit a player and die, we should get the screen shake. But only when we hit the player. If you fall off the screen, you won't get a shake, which is I think is right. It would be weird for it to shake when you fall off screen. Uh, in fact, you can't fall off screen, so I don't know what the hell that other thing is for. So let's just stand here. There we go. Yeah, there's a... Okay, so we can make that more... Um, if we if we change that to like a 1.8, that should shake a little bit more. this works then I'll, I'll call it a night there for the dev or I'll go and have a break and um, when I come back we'll do oh no wow that goes horrifically wrong okay wow it's interesting actually it's like an invisible okay I definitely can't set that value let's try setting that value in fact it only really needs that little shake it just needs a little something just to, to say that you've there's an impact Maybe that is enough, but yeah, okay, so I can't set a, I can't set a high value there. So let's just go and have a look at the IRQ. Maybe it's just an IRQ thing. So I can use utils maybe. Yeah, there we go. Screen shaped timer. Load screen shape values to X. Ah, okay. Uh so if I just duplicate those three times. Um, and then I can go back into enemies, set that to 1A, and that should work. Right. It's just because it was reading weird values. Works all right, actually. I kind of like that. So you get a much bigger shake if you if you hit something. I like that. Cool. All right, I think I'll call it a night there. So we've got one bug we definitely need to fix with the uh, with the uh, UFO in that it goes off the bottom of the screen. It should not be able to do that. Um, we'll we'll fix it at the top as well. I I had a feeling that was going to be an issue. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we've got two sets of graphics now. I'm going to try and do a third um, and maybe make some more kind of decoration stuff around the levels. Um, I don't know what they'll be, but we can kind of find something to kind of put in the background. Um, the thing is, is because we've got black outlines and everything, we can actually just use colors on their own um, without the black outline. So kind of like the pipes don't really have a black outline. They have a little bit of black in them, 
but because they don't have an outline, you can kind of tell that you can walk through them. Uh, you own the only things you can't walk through are the solid black things. So it's got a black edge on it, then you can't walk through it, and that's kind of pretty decent. Um, I think I want to raise the player up slightly as well. I think they go a bit too far into the ground. Um, I mean, definitely when you stand on the on the switch. So I might might tweak that a little bit. So there's a few things we need to tweak, but it's it's not looking too bad. Um, so let me just save everything there. Oh, oh wow, that that hit me funny. Oh. And then when I come back, we'll uh, we'll do some um, Parasol Stars. Let's stage all that. So what have we done? We've uh, fixed some behaviours, uh, especially Saucer. Uh, added new... I said, actually, I did the graphics in. I don't see them in... Oh, yeah, it has in assets. There you go. Added new map uh, graphics. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, oh, fix fix the bug with uh, persistent soft sprites. That'll do. I don't even know why I'm really adding the uh, adding the the commit messages in in such detail. So, what did I think of the four guys game? I really liked it actually. Um, so I. What I did find, so I played it a little bit um, off stream and I found it wasn't as exciting when I wasn't being watched or I wasn't playing with, I can imagine playing with other people, it's quite exciting. And um, playing it on stream, the, the, the pressure of people watching you is kind of kind of exciting. So I think it's kind of more of a party game, uh, but I think it's it's so well made. It's just, it's a very simple game and it's just really inventive to use Battle Royale in that way. Um, I really liked it. But I can imagine it's kind of it's going to be a bit of a marmite game. People are either going to love it or hate it. I, uh, for me personally, I think I really I really enjoy it. Um, and I I'm I'm learning the little tips and tricks for doing things as well. So yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely want to I definitely want to play more of it. Um, I probably do. I probably will do another one on stream at some point. Uh, but I do need to go back to uh, Last of Us Two at some point. So that'll probably be Tuesday's game. Thursday is going to be Secondoid, Checkanoid, whatever I want to call it. Um, that's going to be... I don't think I'm going to do anything after stream there. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to plod on with as much of that as I can do. So Thursday is going to be about setting up the, um, the cartridge loader. So it, it's going to load uh, from Magic Desk to begin with. Um, but I'm going to make uh, Easy Flash, Magic Desk, and uh, Gmod 2 versions. So that I think there will be physical release for it, uh, but there will also be a digital release um, for people, probably in Easy Flash format, so you can copy it yourself. So I'll be doing um, I'll be doing that cartridge load of stuff, which I've kind of mostly got anyway. Um, I'll just be kind of setting the project out and planning it out a little bit, maybe uh looking at some kind of videos getting an idea of what i need to do but the main thing i definitely need to do is is the most efficient um sprite multiplexer i can think of so um that's going to be the the main main uh the main thing uh yeah no problems uh Amok. congratulations again as i say very well deserved um you've been a great supporter of the stream so i'm, I'm very pleased to be sending that to you so um was the Starfield streaming prep for Secondoid? Uh, no, it wasn't actually. The um, the particle stream I did on Thursday was was in preparation for Checkanoid, um, uh, which uses well, not quite the same. And the, the Starfield was done in bitmap mode. Um, this is the particle system that I've done. In fact, I'll quickly show you before. I don't know if you saw this. Did I save that all? I think I saved all that. Um, so this particle test that I did is, uh, it looks very flickery on stream, but it doesn't look flickery at all on the on the real machine. It's just because of the, the syncing. Um, so this was done for the Chepnoid game, uh, which allows me to have 
uh, multiple particles with kind of physics and and stuff. As I say, it looks incredibly flickery on stream, but it's not this flickery in in real life, but um, on on a real machine, on real hardware. But you can see that the the particles uh, there's 64 particles. They bounce off things and uh, and stuff. So and it uses kind of not a lot of raster time as well. So there's a bit more raster time used for the physics, um, which comes to about here, I think, but it's still all done off screen. Um, and the thing is the physics can be spread out throughout the screen. It really doesn't matter. It's only the display, which is this bit here. Um, and the cool thing with this is it, it just uses, um, it just uses a 16, um, uh, 16 characters so that's why you're getting the flickering it's flickering between different sets didn't look that flickery today yeah I, it's i don't know why it does look a bit more flickery today uh, but on real hardware it's fine let me see if i can quickly show you on there so thankfully the the camera actually picks up the uh picks up the stability of the uh the particles quite well so let me show you on this here uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see the particles on this, but um, so this is connected to my ultimate um, and, and basically hides a lot of the flicker. And you can see there, they look pretty solid and they don't really flicker at all. But it's a nice, it's a nice effect. It's quite simple, works quite well. So <laughs> I'm glad that got caught. Red wine is not the best to, to spill, especially into a computer. So that was quite well saved, I think. I, I think I got away with that. Thankfully, there's nothing in those vents. They're, they're, they're hidden pretty much. <laughs> that was a full bottle as well. That would have been disastrous if that had gone over properly. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, so so the particle system is going to be using Seconoid because I don't know if you've seen the videos of it, but um, it's quite heavy on the part particles. Um, so you've probably seen the trailers, but... I mean, obviously, it's not going to have this many particles, but um, I needed something because I think if I just did it without the particles, it would look a bit weird. Uh, it would look a bit empty. Um, so, I mean, it's going to start without the particles and we're just going to slowly add them in and see what we can get away with. So uh, why is it all black and white? I don't know. It's just the style that, um, that's been, been quite popular recently with games like... Uh, Gatto Roboto and, and stuff like that. Um, but the, the cool thing about this is there is a little bit of red in it here and there as well. So there will be some switches to red things. You can see the flashing red on these sprites here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one because this is why I need a good sprite multiplexer. I'm hoping to get 32 sprites. Um, and part of that is that I don't need to change the color at all. Uh, for the most part, um, for the sprites, so so the the actual application of color is a little bit of time saved in the multiplexer routine. So um, I'm hoping to make good use of the fact that it's one bit graphics. It also means I don't really need to do anything with the. Uh, let's put myself back on screen properly. There we go. I don't really need to do anything with the um, with the color RAM as well. So. <laughs> this looks like a good fit for the Specky. Yeah, it would be a good fit for the Specky as well. Um, to be honest, most of the most of these modern one bit games would would work really well on a Spectrum. Uh, the problem is 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 a lot of them do have quite fast moving graphics. Um, you know, for a lot a lot of action going on, and I think the Specky would struggle uh, to 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 blit that much stuff around. So, um, yeah. So I I think even though the 
the the thing is is the the, the c64 can do spectrum style graphics it can definitely do them it's just why would you do them when you've got all those colors you can put a spectrum uh, you can put a c64 in bitmap um uh, single color mode and do most of what you can do on the spectrum and that's been shown by the multiple games that have been uh, ported um to the pc i mean look at dizzy as well so dizzy is a game that was originally done for the spectrum it was designed for designed and, and uh originally came out on the spectrum and pretty much every dizzy up to i think it was uh was it fantasy world dizzy or something i can't remember one of the no, Magic Dizzy, Magic Kingdom or something. One of the later ones actually had multicolor graphics, but up until that point, they used one bit graphics and they used the same kind of design for the levels and the same graphics for the levels. The only exception is, is they actually had a hardware sprite for Dizzy. So he didn't clash when he moved over things. So it made it made a Dizzy experience, but it was better on the C64 because there was no color clash. All right, um, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. When I come back, we'll play. Uh, what time are we on? Three a.m. All right, we'll 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 play a little bit of Parasol Stars. Um, at least one decent decent playthrough, anyway. So, um, all right, I'll be back in uh, five minutes, guys. I'm going to stop the SID requests as well while I'm gone. So, uh, back in five minutes. Be right back. 